a warship with the logo of the world government was quietly moored on the island, silently observing the island shrouded in wind and snow. Golden flashes, red fireballs, and purplish black slashes could be seen from time to time from the island, in addition to the deafening roars that overwhelmed all other sounds. It's been five days, right? On the deck, a man in white with a white mask on his face asked in a deep voice. Behind him stood a dozen CP6 members in black suits, exuding elite aura. Hearing this question, one of them quickly answered. Sir, it's already the fifth day. It seems that the winner will soon be decided. How are the members of the Shadow Tribe who are locked in the ship's hold? Aren't they dead? She continued to ask the man in white without looking back. The ship's doctors have completed the treatment. In addition, their vitality is stronger than ordinary people, so they are all alive and well. Now they have been injected with anesthetics and are still in a coma. The man in white nodded with satisfaction and said, Yes, take good care of them. Yes. The relentless weather continued to advance with the cold wind and another four hours passed in silence. Suddenly, the island seemed to fall silent. Both the flashes and the explosions had stopped. The snow falling from the sky did not know when it had stopped, leaving only the bright sun that covered everything around. This made the explosion craters, large and small, on the island, and the cut marks, more noticeable and horrible. At this moment, a group of Cypher Paul personnel on the warship keenly heard a muffled bang, and then a black figure flew out quickly from the interior of the island. The black shadow fell heavily to the ground and rolled dozens of times, finally lying motionless on the still intact beach. Then a golden flash of light gathered around the black shadow, it was Borsellino, but he looked really embarrassed at this time. Not only was he sweating profusely, but his breathing was somewhat rapid and heavy. The bright yellow suit on his body had become tattered. Only the justice coat was still neat, but a large section of the left sleeve was cut off. Ooh he's really a troublesome guy. This is really tiring me out. Borsellino looked down at Gecko Moria, who rolled his eyes and fainted. Borsellino shook his head tiredly. These five days of fighting experience were definitely the most difficult and longest time he had experienced since joining the Navy. Gecko Moria's strength was really good. If he didn't have the glint glint fruit ability, he might have let that guy escape. Not to mention anything else. If Gecko Moria lets the Doppelman fly out alone first, and then waits until he is very far away and then uses the Cage Musha to swap positions, then the chance of him escaping is quite high. It's just that for some unknown reason, this guy has no intention of running away alone. It's all in vain that he's been wary until now. Ten minutes later, the world government warship approached, and several CP6 agents in black suits ran down. They first placed handcuffs and shackles on Gecko Moria, and then six people worked together to take him to the warship and finally placed him in a single cell in the hold. In the cells next to him, there were two members of the Gecko Pirates crew lying there. Even though they only had 20 people. They are all tall, and the average height of 6 meters per person takes up a lot of space. Therefore, out of a total of 12 cells, only one is still empty at this time. Thank you for your hard work, Vice Admiral Borsellino. On the deck of the warship, the man in white from CP0 said in a deep voice to Borsellino who appeared instantly. Don't come to me next time if something like this happens again. Also, I worked so hard this time. Go back and talk to them about the bonus. Borsellino complained, and at the same time, he turned and walked towards the cabin preparing to go back to his room and lie down for a while. I will, but there's no guarantee. The large underwater prison, impel down, the blazing hell on the fourth floor underground, five days have passed since the war of light and shadow. This place was the core of the entire prison, where the director's office and the warehouse that supplied food to everyone in the prison were located. The reason why it was called the blazing hell was because there was fire everywhere. The ground was as hot as a frying pan, and in the center was a huge iron pot with a diameter of 50 meters, filled with boiling scarlet blood. The air on the fourth floor underground was filled with a strong smell of blood. 
Two days ago, Gekko Moria woke up from a coma, and for the first time he realized what it meant to be unbearably hot. As for the smell of blood, it was actually very sweet to him. But he was in a pretty bad mood. He really didn't expect that he had just set sail from his hometown in the West Blue with his clanmates in high spirits last year, and that he would be caught here just a few days after entering the New World. 3. Originally, I wanted to become the second Pirate King. Are you finally awake? I've been waiting for you here for a long time. 1. At this time, a strange and indifferent voice came from outside the cell. This made Moria, whose hands and feet were chained with sea stone chains, suddenly raise his head and glare at the man in white who walked in. Who are you? I belong directly to the nobility of the world. Celestial Dragon Gekko Moria felt very surprised and asked, Are the Celestial Dragons targeting me? Why? It can be said that as for the reason, of course it is because of you and your Devil Fruit ability. The man in white answered patiently, and then continued, The crew members of your own race are still alive. What? Moria was greatly surprised and asked quickly, Where are they? Right above your head, on the third floor underground, starvation hell. Apart from being hungry, there is no big problem. Their injuries have also been treated by us. The man in white replied. Hearing this, Moria breathed a sigh of relief, but immediately frowned and said, You came to see me and said that the celestial dragons took a fancy to my ability, so what is your purpose? The man in white liked Moria to get straight to the point. After all, the environment in the impel down was really bad, and he didn't want to stay for more than a day. The lords above hope that you can join the world government and become a jailer in impel down. However, you are also qualified for normal promotion. It is not impossible to become the director if you have the ability. What? Gekko Moria's eyes almost popped out of his head. He looked at the mask on the face of the man in white in shock. He raised his voice and said, You caught me here just to make me work here. 1. It can be said that the lords above feel that your devil fruit ability is very suitable for working in Impel Down, so they asked me and Vice Admiral Borsellino to invite you here. The man in white nodded. You. Gekko Moria was irritated by the other party's word invite. He felt a wave of bad energy pouring out of his belly, and he immediately stood up as if he was going to riot. His height is nearly seven meters, and he looks very scary standing up. But the man in white was unmoved. He put his hands in the pockets of his pure white trousers, his attitude remained indifferent, and he didn't pay attention to Moria's aura at all. I have counted twenty of your fellow crew members. According to the promise made to you by the lords, as long as you work here honestly, one person can be released every year to work as a jailer with you. At the same time, every time you advance to a level, you can release one additional person. Which means that if you can become the director, you can regain your freedom in up to 15 years and leave here with your companions. As soon as these words came out, Gekko Moria was stunned, and remained silent for nearly 20 minutes. During this period, his face continued to flash with struggle, entanglement, unwillingness and resentment, and finally turned into a long sigh. Hey! Take me to see them first. What else could he do? 2. Dash. Chapter 32, Chapter 32, The Distressed Five Elders 1. In the dead of night, the huge full moon appeared again. Lord Imu, the doctors from the Drum Kingdom are treating the merfolk and fishmen. According to their estimation, it will take about 15 days to recover. In the empty hall, the five elders knelt under the stage, and the one in the middle made a report respectfully. Psychologically, although Vice Admiral Tsuru was a little reluctant at first, she finally took action to wash away the negative emotions in their hearts. Imu was very satisfied to hear this. He really couldn't bear to see the merfolk and fishmen living in despair, numbness and hatred. At the same time, he was thinking about their lives. After all, if they had an extreme attitude towards the world government, the only thing waiting for them would be to be dealt with. 
she has no doubt about the world government's ruthlessness in this regard. But for Imu, no matter what her psychological changes are, as long as the results are satisfactory. Gecko Moria has also agreed to become the jailer of Impel Down, responsible for cutting out the shadows of prisoners and managing the cut shadows. According to Director Columbus's feedback, although his attitude towards his colleagues is quite indifferent, at work, he is considered responsible, but he often sends food and water to his fellow members of the starvation hell without authorization, which gives him a headache. Let him take care of this aspect. As long as it's not too much, leave it to Moria. We just need him to be obedient and work hard. Imu's tone was still cold. With nearly 600,000 prisoners imprisoned in Impel Down, Gecko Moria faces a huge workload, not to mention the large number of prisoners that will come in later. 1. According to Cypher Paul's intelligence feedback in various sea areas, rumors about the One Piece treasure have become more and more intense, and the Navy has gradually discovered that there are more pirates at sea. What happened to the thriller bark? This time, St. Shepherd Jew Peter was responsible for the answer, and he said respectfully, with the help of the three guide birds found in the forest of Jaya Island, CP5 has found it in the Florian Triangle, and is now exploring ways to control it. Let's take advantage of the time to transform it, the tide of the great age of pirates is rising all over the world, we need to use it to quell this tsunami sweeping the world. Imu looked at them coldly and then gave them the order to retreat. Yes, Lord Imu. The five elders responded in unison. Also, have that Don Quixote kid come see me and use force if necessary. Imu said again. However, these words made the five elders very surprised and looked at each other with obvious doubts and confusion in their eyes, but they still agreed. We will obey your wishes. Immediately afterwards, Saint Topman Warkuri, who was still kneeling in the middle, asked, Will the other one carry out the summons? I remember that he is almost twenty years old. Imu frowned, but soon realized who the other party was talking about. After thinking for a moment, he said, It's not necessary for now, we'll talk about it next year when he's twenty. For a while, he really couldn't think of any arrangements for the kid, so he might as well continue to let himself go and hone his own strength. Yes, Lord Imu. Just when the five elders thought that the visit was over and were about to say farewell, another order came from the throne high above. I'm going out in a few days. Please prepare a flight-capable vehicle for me. The space inside the vehicle should be large. 1. The five elders were shocked. They all raised their heads and looked at Imu in shock. They had almost the same idea in their hearts. Lord Imu is actually going out. This person has been living in seclusion for hundreds of years. Does he really want to go out? What? I can't go out. Seeing the surprise in the eyes of these people, Imu asked back with displeasure in his tone. This made the five elders turn from surprise to panic in an instant. No. No, no, this is your freedom. Of course, we have no objection. It's just that your safety is very important. Can you tell us your goal and the time you will be out? Saint Ethan Baron Venus Juro, who was holding the show de Kaiditsu, asked softly. There are a lot of places I have to go, and the time I will be away is still uncertain. I will leave after this levely is over so you should seize the time to prepare and use the Den Den Mushi to contact me if there is anything you need. Imu thought for a while and gave some simple answers. In fact, for more than a year, he has been staying in between the moon, and at most he has been active in the Pangaea castle. He is really depressed. This former Imu can be a homebody for more than 800 years, but he can't do it. The outside world is so beautiful and wonderful, and he has long wanted to go out and see it, and there are indeed some things that need to be handled by himself. 1. You need to prepare for this vehicle. Take a boat, it is too slow, and it cannot fly. If you use Jeppo on your own, although you can fly and the speed is fast enough, it seems too low a level, right? Your Majesty Imu, the current ruler of the entire planet, 
this kind of majesty and prestige must be guaranteed. In addition, when you go out, you will definitely encounter a lot of trivial things. You can't do these things by yourself, right? We understand, Lord Imu, but in what capacity are you going to go out? And what is your appearance? St. Marcus Mars asked worriedly. Prepare me a new mediocre identity as a celestial dragon, as well as contact lenses that disguise my eyes but do not affect my vision. As for my appearance, I have not shown myself for hundreds of years, so no one will be able to recognize me. Imu has already thought about this and talked about his thoughts in a leisurely manner. The five elders heard that Lord Imu was determined to go out, so they said nothing more. Next, they only need to cooperate well. About Impel Down, I want to transfer someone out, you can send someone to inform. Finally, Imu suddenly thought of something and added. The six-person meeting ended, and the five elders returned to the room of authority and as soon as they sat down on the sofa, they held their own small meeting. Do you have any ideas about the vehicle that Lord Imu mentioned? St. Topman Warkuri, was the first to speak. It's indeed a bit difficult. It's easy to say that the space needs to be large. The main reason is that the Lord Imu want to be able to fly. St. Jagarsha Saturn, said. St. Marcus Mars, thought for a moment and suggested, why don't we ask Dr. Vegapunk if the special science group can build a flying ship? Even if they have the ability to make it, can they make it in time with less than three months to go before the levely? Asked St. Ethan Baron Venus Juro. That. Then try the devil fruit, the ability to fly. Saint Shepherd Jew Peter thought for a moment, and suddenly said, Isn't Shiki still locked in the eternal hell? Just find a way to make him obedient. It can be solved. Lord Imu said before that he has other uses for him. Apart from drawing blood to provide research materials for the special science group, he is not allowed to be touched easily. Saint Topman Warkuri shook his head. What else can be done? Saint Shepherd Jew Peter felt worried. At this time, Saint Jagarsha Saturn said, Devil Fruit is a good idea. Although Shiki can't use it, we can find other ones. There are so many Devil Fruits in the treasure house that they are almost piled up into a hill. Let people look for them, there must be something useful. They followed Imu's order a few days ago and took over all the Devil Fruits from other celestial dragons so as not to be wasted by those idiots. At the same time, they had people classify and record them according to the illustrations. Therefore, the number of devil fruits currently in the hands of the five elders is not an exaggeration at all to describe them as small mountains. As for the problem of the celestial dragons being noisy, since one of them was deposed before, all the celestial dragons have become more honest, whether they are merfolk and fishmen or devil fruits, they have all surrendered obediently. Okay, that's it, let's look for it first. This is one of the foundations that world government has accumulated over hundreds of years. Dash. Chapter 33, Chapter 33, Da Flamingo was invited 1. North Blue, Spider Miles Island, the place is still filled with thick industrial smoke, and occasionally the sound of machinery operating in the factory can be heard. Hundreds of thousands of firearms of various types are manufactured here every month, and then loaded onto cargo ships for sale to various parts of the North Blue and even other sea areas. Therefore, this island has three large piers. Whether day or night, the frequency of ship arrival and departure is extremely high, but there are very few ships docked. On this day, Da Flamingo took Pika off his ship and he felt a lot happy when he saw the lively scene of loading and unloading. Hey, business is as good as ever. Because he knows that these boxes of weapons will cause chaos, war, and death in various countries and islands. It can also be regarded as creating a lot of trouble for the world, and this is what he is happy to see. Sooner or later, this sea ruled by those high-ranking celestial dragons will be destroyed by him with his own hands. Da Flamingo, since I, Da Flamingo, cannot be one of the celestial dragons, then you celestial dragons won't have it easy either. 1. When he thought of this, 
Doflamingo's eyes revealed madness and murderous intent, but all of this was completely covered by his sunglasses. Doffy, I heard that Bullet has been arrested by the Navy, and the person who took action was Garp. Pika, who is 4 meters and 70 centimeters tall, happily follows Doflamingo, but his voice sounds very squeaky. Compared with his gladiator armor and rough muscle appearance, it makes him look very happy. People have a strong sense of inconsistency. Hey, that guy is a brainless idiot at first glance. No matter what he does, such a person will never last long, and his end is destined to be miserable. Doflamingo walked with an arrogant step as if he owned the entire place. He sneered and walked leisurely along the mountains of industrial waste piled on the edge of the island towards his home base. Sometimes I wonder why there are so many fools in the world who can only use their fists but don't use their brains to think. No matter how strong a person is, how many opponents can he deal with? Strategy, power, military power, financial resources, even reputation and status, these things are actually part of power. Pika behind him listened carefully to Doflamingo's words. He liked the latter's confident look very much. His young master should be so good and smart. The Don Quixote family could not develop to its current scale without Doflamingo's planning and leadership. Hmm. But just as the two of them approached their small building by the sea, they suddenly noticed something was wrong. Doflamingo is well aware of the benefits of nurturing direct descendants from an early age, so he has adopted many young orphans and brought them here if he thought they were good. So usually when you walk to this location, you can hear the playing sounds of nine-year-old Gladius, six-year-old Buffalo, and Monet. But now, it is quiet, very quiet, except for the sound of the waves crashing and the seagulls chirping in the air, there is no sound. Treble. Diamante. Soon, the small building came into view. Just seeing the messy scene, Pika screamed in shock. At that moment, all the members and children of the Don Quixote family were on the ground, unconscious, or dead. Doflamingo's pupils constricted in a flash, and a dangerous aura emanated from him. Everyone who is familiar with him knows that Buddy Mingo is angry. Doflamingo is a person who cares about his family very much. For him, the four people Virgo, Treble, Diamante, and Pika who first appeared around him are his family. Don't say that someone hurts them. Even if they tease them, they will treat them mercilessly. Before, Buffalo laughed because of Pika's tone and was severely beaten by the latter. Doflamingo did nothing to stop him, even if Pika killed Buffalo on the spot, he wouldn't even blink. The four types of people, close, distant, foreign, and enemy, are clearly divided in his mind. Pika disappeared from the spot in an instant and appeared next to Treble at an extremely fast speed squatting down to check. The coat that the latter often wore like a quilt had melted into a puddle of blue slime, leaving him lying on the ground with his thin upper body exposed, and a golden cane broken into two pieces fell beside him. Diamante, not far away, looked even worse. His abdomen was bruised, and he could tell at a glance that he had been hit hard. There was still scarlet blood at the corner of his mouth. Phew! He's not dead. He's still alive, that's great. Pika felt happy for a while, then became furious, and his already high-pitched voice became even sharper and harsher. Who did this? Who did it? There are people inside. Doflamingo walked to Pika and stopped to remind him, his eyes fixed on the small building. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw the door on the first floor being pushed open from the inside and an extremely thin and tall figure wearing a white mask, white suit, and coat came out. Who are you? Doflamingo took out his hands from his trouser pockets. In fact, with his temperament, he should have acted without saying a word, but after using the Kanbunsho Kohaki, he felt a strong and dangerous aura, which made him be cautious. But the man in white did not answer but tilted his head and looked at Pika. The next moment, he disappeared from the spot with a swish, and then appeared in front of Pika. This caused Doflamingo and Pika's expressions to change, especially the latter, who activated his Busos Hoku Haki, covering his entire body and dyeing it black. 
It's just that the man in white was too fast, and Pika couldn't make the next move at all. He received a heavy blow to the abdomen and his entire body immediately turned into a large projectile and flew backwards. Clang! At the same time, the Gashikido that Da Flamingo waved over was easily grasped by the left palm of the man in white. It was completely unable to hurt the latter's palm, the former secretly thought something was wrong. Don Quixote Da Flamingo, there are some things that are only suitable for you to listen to alone. By the way, I am a member of the world government. But just when Da Flamingo was about to attack further, the man in white suddenly spoke up to stop him, and after speaking, he released the Gashikido. Da Flamingo. Da Flamingo watched the man in white retreat a few meters. After a few seconds of hesitation, he retracted his hand and suppressed the violence and anger in his heart. First of all, the strength shown by the latter was obviously much stronger than his, and secondly, Pika, Diamante and others were not in danger of life, they just fell into a coma. From these two points, it can be seen that the other party does not have murderous intentions, and this person claims to be from the world government, and his dressing style is indeed very similar, but he changed from a black suit to a white suit. At this time, Da Flamingo came into contact with CP0 for the first time. What do you want to say? The man in white said coldly, The lords want to see you, come with me. Mary Gioa say. Da Flamingo opened his eyes under his sunglasses in surprise. The five elders sent you here. That's right. Hearing this, Da Flamingo's face turned even darker, and he sneered through gritted teeth, I wanted to go back at first, but you refused, and now you want me to go back obediently. What do you think of me? Also, you beat them to the ground just to inform me of this sentence. The man in white didn't change anything after hearing such a question. His tone was still so cold, like a machine without emotion, and he said. It was your people who took action first. As for the one just now, because I found that knocking him unconscious is a very convenient way. So, what is your decision, go or refuse? Da Flamingo sneered and asked, what if I say I can't go? Knock you unconscious and take you away by force. 5. Da Flamingo. 4. Dash. Chapter 34, Chapter 34 the changes in Moria and Shiria 1. Impel down, fourth floor underground, blazing hell. The environment here is still as hot and dry as the abyss, and the air is filled with disgusting blood. One prisoner was seen wearing a black and white striped prison uniform. Under the insults and whippings of the cruel guards, he endured the burning pain in the solace of his feet, carried bundles of dry firewood into the boiling pool of blood, and then lined up to throw it into the fire beneath the cauldron. At this time, Gecko Moria, who had just become a little jailer, was walking in and out of the prison room holding a two-meter-long pair of scissors. Just like now, he left a cell and opened the next cell door. Under the horrified gaze of the prisoner inside, he held its top like a chicken with his left hand. He cut the shadow beneath him with a click and then threw the prisoner against the side wall. He then went on to throw the cut shadow he had in his hand into the shadow box he was carrying as if it were trash. This shadow box is actually made from the shape of his shadow, that is, the Doppelman, because if you want to preserve the shadow, in addition to the physical body, only a box that is also a shadow can do it. Compared to the former, the number of shadows that the latter can store is almost infinite. After all, shadows actually have no substance. They can be placed in the shadow box by simply stacking them. He has prepared four shadow boxes of this kind to store the shadows of prisoners in the blazing hell, starvation hell, wild beast hell and crimson hell. Director Columbus stipulated that he could only move between these four floors. Because all the prisoners in the freezing hell of the fifth underground floor are big pirates with a bounty of hundreds of millions and the prisoners in the eternal hell of the sixth underground floor are all extraordinary, and every one of them was punished for being too vicious. A monster-level pirate erased from history. Moria doesn't care. These four layers of prisoners are enough for him to cut for several years. 
it's good to have two layers less. At least on the surface, he seems very obedient. Furthermore, he found that the environment in this prison is very suitable for his life. This kind of place where the sun is not seen all day long is very comfortable for the shadow tribe, but it is difficult to carry out the light burial program. Just as Moria walked out of the cell with a cold face and was about to go to the next one, two colleagues wearing jailer uniforms and holding muskets were patrolling and chatting. Although they spoke quietly, they were even more noticeable in this environment. Shiryu's warden is about to be transferred out. That's great. Once this murderous star is gone, we low-level jailers no longer have to worry about dying under the sword of our own people. Who says it isn't so, but the happiest people should be the prisoners. Over the years, it is not certain if there have been a thousand deaths, but what is certain is that hundreds of prisoners have died at the hands of from Shiryu, right? Hearing this, Moria didn't pay any attention to it, because he really didn't know Shiryu. On the contrary, it was Vice Warden Magellan who impressed him deeply. The way he looked like he was exuding poisonous gas was quite scary. The aura of Chief Warden Columbus is even more unfathomable. Anyway, he is not someone I can deal with now. However, there is a question, how to get promoted in this place? Have you done meritorious service? But where did the merit come from? When he thought of this, Moria stopped and was stunned. He thought to himself, no, it seems that as long as the world government is willing, I will never be able to upgrade in my life, so I will probably have to stay here for the whole life. For some reason, his thinking began to diverge, and he inexplicably thought of the future. What if he was still a jailer in ten years' time? Then who is he? the strongest jailer in the history of Impel Down. In the distant office of the chief warden, Shiryu of the Rain had completed the resignation procedures with the chief warden and was walking out with a paper bag containing various documents. But as soon as he came out, he saw a man in black who was nearly five meters tall, dressed like a devil, wearing long curved horns and carrying devil bat wings standing there. Hey, Vice Warden Magellan! I didn't expect you to come and give me a ride. It seems you don't hate me very much. Shiryu teased. No, I hate you. Too. Magellan did not save any face for his ex-colleague who was about to leave and said with a cold face, I just came to see you get out of Impel Down to make sure I never see you again. Ah, you are so heartless. Shiryu smiled without being angry took out an expensive cigar from his coat pocket and put it into his mouth, then lit it with a lighter and took a deep breath of smoke. He took a look at the harsh environment of the blazing hell, and while exhaling thick smoke, he sighed, Actually, I quite like this place. I don't know if I can feed Rayo when it comes to the Navy. After speaking, he passed by Magellan and walked towards the elevator leading to the first floor above the sea. The former looked at the latter's figure walking further and further away, shook his head and sighed. The Navy didn't know what was going on, but it actually took this bastard over. I hope someone over there can restrain him, otherwise the blood will really flow like a river. But on the other hand, it's good news that he's leaving Impel down. Shiryu came here with regret and nostalgia and took the elevator to the first floor. The place was still as lively as ever and the new prisoners who had been arrested lined up waiting to be stripped and baptized. 2. Well, the whole body baptism with 100 degree boiling water is absolutely stimulating, and then you put on a brand new black and white striped prison uniform and undergo a second disinfection with high temperature in the blazing hell in the fourth underground floor. Shiryu was thrown into a different hell. 1. The jailers and other staff who were supervising the prisoners were stunned when they saw Shiryu's figure, and no one dared to come up and say hello. At most, he would look off with fear or happiness in his eyes, and Shiryu didn't care about it. In his eyes, these are the weak, and the weak are not worthy of his care at all. They are only suitable for passing time and letting Reya drink blood. After passing the iron fence, you will see the door to the outside world. This is a door embedded in a high wall and made of solid steel. The next thing was simple. 
he successfully boarded the Navy ship that came to pick him up and slowly sailed away from the underwater prison where he had been staying for many years. The strange thing is that even though he looked nostalgic just now, Shiryu didn't even look back. Instead, his eyes were full of expectations for the future. No matter what, coming out of it is equivalent to freedom. If you don't enjoy your stay in the Navy, you can leave whenever you want, right? Therefore, Shiryu was in a very happy mood now. He was so happy that his eyes turned slightly red when he looked at the sailors around him, and his hands suddenly felt itchy. It was only when the warship sailed out of the first gate of justice that he noticed something was wrong, because the ship did not follow the Tyre current to the next gate of justice. Aren't we going to report to Marine Ford? Shiryu asked the Commodore, and at the same time he felt vigilant in his heart. It was originally like this, but because you were transferred to Vice Admiral Sakazuki as an adjutant, and Vice Admiral Sakazuki just received a mission, he informed us to take you there directly and wait until the mission is completed. Then we will return together to Marine Ford. Because Shiryu was appointed to the rank of Rear Admiral at the Navy headquarters, the Commodore naturally responded with honorifics. Vice Admiral Sakazuki Shiryu looked stunned. Although he was working as an errand in Impel Down, he actually kept up to date with events in the outside world. The World Economy newspaper is delivered on time every issue, and coupled with the harsh environment inside, reading newspapers has become the first leisure item, so he still knows about the three new candidates for Navy Admiral. That high-level Logia-type Magma Magma Fruit user, Sakazuki. 1. Yes. Dash. Chapter 35, Chapter 35, Shiryu's Style 2 Two hours later, the warship where Shiryu was located successfully encountered another warship. Following the Commodore's instructions, Shiryu walked alone along the gangplank to the deck of the second warship. At the same time, I saw the back of Sakazuki standing on the bow of the ship at a glance. In Shiryu's eyes, although Vice Admiral Sakazuki was one head taller than him, the aura he exuded from his whole body was more powerful than Magellan's. This made him feel a little heavy, and his expression had already calmed down. Reporting to Vice Admiral Sakazuki, the former head jailer of Impel Down and now the rear admiral of the Navy headquarters, Shiryu reports to you. As soon as he finished speaking, Sakazuki turned around slowly, folded his arms across his chest, and glanced around the former with an oppressive gaze. Head Jailer of Impel Down, you are responsible for guarding prisoners. What do you think of pirates? Tell me. When Shiryu heard this, he subconsciously thought about the other party's intentions. His understanding of Sakazuki was limited to what was introduced in the newspaper, the Admiral Candidate title and the Logia-type Magma Magma Fruit ability. As for his personality, likes and dislikes, these were completely unknown. In this case, he chose to answer according to his own heart. A lot of garbage. Except for those with skills, the others should not be locked up and waste food. If they need to be reused, they can be used as shooting targets for soldiers and as targets for testing blades. Sakazuki raised his brows. Although his expression was calm, he felt very satisfied in his heart. He originally thought that if a merciful person showed up, he would just kick him out and let him swim back to Marineford to wait for reassignment. Yes, I hope you can keep your promise later. After saying that, he ordered the Marines standing by, let's go. Yes. The sailor quickly ran back to the cabin to deliver the order. Soon, the huge ship under his feet started to move. You should have some understanding of this mission, right? Sakazuki asked in a deep voice. Shiryu nodded. On his way here, he had already read the mission content sent by the other party. It said that the Kingdom of Maidan, located on the first half of the Grand Line, Route 1, and the Fourth Island, was attacked by a large number of pirates. Route number 1 was close to the comm belt where Impel Down was located, so the warships were relatively close. When Sakazuki heard the words a large number of pirates, he immediately took on the mission without giving Marineford or other nearby warships a chance. Furthermore, 
in order to hurry up, Sakazuki did not go to impel down to pick up Shiryu, but instead asked the latter to come quickly on someone else's warship. I will not take the first step in this mission, you will lead the team to solve it. No problem, I'm looking forward to it too. Shiryu touched the red banded hilt of the Reu on his waist with his right hand and showed a cold smile. He really didn't expect that he would have the opportunity to go out to kill after entering the navy. He was even more pleased with the job change this time, but his superior seemed too strong. In Impel Down, although he, was the third in command, he was actually equivalent to the second in command. Except for the orders of Chief Warden Columbus, he did not have to deal with anyone at all, including Vice Warden Magellan. As for the other chief guards and guards, seeing him was like a mouse seeing a cat. As for Chief Warden Columbus, unless the world government needs his cooperation, he usually doesn't have a strong sense of presence and doesn't talk much. He even turns a blind eye to the private killings of prisoners from time to time, and basically doesn't care about the first four floors. In his eyes, prisoners, starting from the fifth level, with bounties worth hundreds of millions, are considered important assets. Instead, Magellan often scolded him for these things, which was why he was so upset with him. Hadn't he killed some little bastards? Why bother him endlessly? When a warship carefully manufactured by the shipwrights of the capital of water sailed at full speed, it showed amazing efficiency and speed, and arrived in the waters near the kingdom of Maidan in only one hour. At this distance, Sakazuki, Shiryu, and others on the deck could already hear the roar brought by the sea breeze. Looking from a distance, they could vaguely see seven or eight warships flying the pirate flag, heading towards the towns on the island were bombarded continuously. One of the ships gradually stopped shelling and slowly turned its bow, seemingly about to sail out of the dock and prepare to leave. It seems we have been discovered. Shiryu smiled. I saw him casually taking out a cigar, putting it in his mouth and lighting it on fire. Whenever he wanted to kill someone, and when he killed many people, his mood would get excited. Taking a puff of cigarette at this time was the biggest thing for him enjoyment. Sakazuki did not respond or interfere with his words and actions. Since he had previously said that he would leave the task to the other party, he would just let him do it. Of course, he wouldn't really let the pirates escape in front of him. Swoosh! The next second, like other naval officers, Shiryu, dressed in a coat of justice, turned into an afterimage and disappeared, leaving only a light trail of smoke floating in the air. This made all the officers and sailors on the deck look forward to the next performance of the adjutant. At the same time, other pirate warships also stopped their bombardment and hurriedly turned their bows. Apparently, they also discovered the approaching huge warship. Among them, the first ship to react has completed its turn and is heading in the other direction. Hurry! Hurry up! Now is not the time to fight the navy. On the pirate ship, a giant man in iron armor, nearly four meters tall, with a strong build and a fierce face, waved the machete in his hand and shouted loudly. The other pirates on the ship, whether in temperament or clothing, looked like very normal soldiers. In short, they didn't look like pirates. Whoosh! At this moment, a sharp sound of breaking through the air rang in the ears, causing the giant man and the crew members to change their expressions. The first one even instinctively shouted, Beware of the bombardment! Not just him, everyone thought that the warship in the distance had fired. But after a few seconds, the sound of passing through the air disappeared, and nothing happened. There was not even a water explosion in the sea, nor was the hull bombed. This made rows of golden question marks light up on their heads. Hey, trash, it's time to die, so smile. Suddenly, an evil and sinister laugh rang out from above. Everyone looked up and saw a three-meter-tall naval officer standing on top of the mast with bright red eyes looking at them mockingly. You! The giant man raised his machete and pointed it at the other person, and just as he was about to say something cruel, the person in his field of vision disappeared in the blink of an eye, except for a slight flash of blood-red light. Ka! Boss Cass! 
The surrounding pirates were shocked because they saw the marine who was on the mast a second ago standing behind Chief Cass, and the long blade at his waist was already drawn, flashing coldly under the sunlight. At the same time, a thin line of blood gradually appeared on the giant man's neck, and the armor on his body turned into pieces and fell to the ground. Who knows how many times he was chopped at this moment. Shiryu didn't even look at Cass behind him. Even though the man in front of him was still breathing and conscious, he was still a corpse in his eyes. Whoosh! The next second, his whole body turned into a white afterimage, flying at high speed among the screams and screams of hundreds of armed pirates, and streaks of blood-red sword light were drawn in the air. Shiryu was a murderer. He didn't like to cut up and destroy ships. Instead, he liked to chop them to death one by one with his sword. The feeling of the blade cutting through the flesh really made him intoxicated. There is a saying that killing people is a bad habit, but he can no longer quit it. 2. Dash. I will post some extra chapters in Patreon, you can check it out. Patreon.com slash Tito Villar. Chapter 36, Chapter 36, Sakazuki's Appreciation and Satisfaction 3. There were more than a hundred people on and off the entire pirate ship. In less than ten seconds, they all covered their necks and fell in a pool of blood. Shiryu stood among the corpses with a satisfied look on his face, full of killing intent. He glanced at the remaining pirate ships. Boom. 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 The warship where Sakazuki was on began to exchange bombardments with seven pirate ships. The black projectiles that turned red due to the heat roared through the air, falling into the sea and raising a large column of water or hitting the hull and exploding in a large fireball. Especially the triple turret on the bow of the warship, whether it is range, rate of fire, or accuracy, it completely overwhelms the pirate ship on the opposite side. The defensive power of the ship's armor is even more disparate. Even if it is bombarded by a few shells, it only left superficial traces and had no impact on the navy warship. At this time, Sakazuki was still in the same posture with his arms folded across his chest. He seemed to be looking at the struggling pirates, but in fact, his eyes were always fixed on Shiryu's figure. In his eyes, Shiryu just jumped out of the first pirate ship, and then flew across the sea at an extremely fast speed, dragging traces of afterimages behind him. Every time his body had a tendency to fall, he stepped on it lightly. As soon as the wave broke out, he continued to move forward at high speed with the help of the force of the wave being blown apart by his kick. Sakazuki is also a Rokushiki master. He can tell at a glance that Shiryu's technique is Jeppo, but it changes from stepping on the air to stepping on the waves. Compared to air, waves are actually easier to step on. Immediately afterwards, Shiryu jumped onto the second pirate ship and started a new round of bloody killings, which made Sakazuki frown a little. It's not that I'm dissatisfied with killing pirates, but I feel that Shiryu's method is too inefficient. In other words, he would have swallowed up all the pirate ships with a big blast of fire. Shiryu's strength is obviously at the level of a master swordsman. It stands to reason that he can also use a flying slash to quickly cut a ship in half. Even if he can't cut seven ships with one sword, one ship with one sword is still no problem, right? According to the current situation, if Shiryu continued to kill ship after ship, he would eventually have to let one or two pirate ships escape. However, he did not want to intervene in advance before those pirate ships sailed out of Sakazuki's attack range. Anyway, it's just a matter of one or two lava bombs. With his Kanbuncho Kohaki, he can completely achieve precise strikes against large targets such as sea ships. In this regard, even the warship under my feet is far inferior to myself. But sometimes as a naval officer, you cannot take action personally at all times. As a commander, you cannot blindly grab the military exploits of your troops. For his part, Shiryu had killed all the pirates that approached him with his sword. He watched with excitement as the head behind the broken sword slid downward and a plume of blood rose into the sky. Cool. Looking back, behind him there was a pool of blood on the ground with corpses. 
Vice Admiral Sakazuki, CP5 hidden in the Kingdom of Maidan sent detailed information. A captain on the warship ran over and reported loudly. He had to raise his voice, otherwise the sound of shells flying through the air and the subsequent explosions could easily drown out the human voice. Tell me about it. Sakazuki said in a deep voice. Most of this group of pirates are civilians from the country. The leader is called Cass. Originally, he was a mid-level general in the king's army. His wife and daughter were kidnapped by Viscount Gadwell of the country two weeks ago and were taken by him a week ago to a company of slaves. For this reason, Cass led his trusted soldiers to incite the common people who were already dissatisfied with the nobles to rebel. They first robbed the king's warship at the dock, then hung the pirate flag that had been prepared on the mast, and then in the name of the Cass pirates they attacked and killed the king's army, plundered all the food and treasures in the dock warehouses, and bombarded the upper town where the royal family and nobles lived for nearly half an hour. It is said that at that time the place was left in ruins and the nobles suffered many casualties. After hearing that this was another incident of nobles forcing soldiers and civilians to rebel, Sakazuki was silent for a moment and uttered a word coldly. Idiot! The headquarters captain thought this was a scolding of the nobleman, which made him dare not say anything more. That idiot named Cass not only killed himself, but also killed everyone who followed him. Sakazuki looked at the pirate ships in the distance that were being attacked by Shiryu. If he doesn't fly the pirate flag, this matter has little to do with our navy. The captain suddenly realized it and thought to himself, yes, if that Cass doesn't fly the pirate flag, then they are not pirates, but the civil strife of the kingdom of Maidan, and naturally they will not be arrested by our navy. According to the laws of the world government, the navy has no right to interfere without authorization in the civil strife of its member countries. Unless the king of the country first applies for assistance from the world government, the government council will then determine whether to help the country based on Cypher Paul's investigation information. If confirmed, the navy headquarters must be notified to send troops for rescue. Then the Navy Fleet Admiral will hand over the information of the main rebel personnel to the relevant departments to determine the amount of the reward and the reward list. Finally, we have to consider what level of naval officer to dispatch and what size of fleet to bring. This process will take at least one or two days at the earliest. Including the travel time, it will take at least three or four days. If it is a country far away, it will take even longer. Obviously. The king of the kingdom of Maidan knew the rules very well, so he called the navy directly and said that an extremely large number of pirates had attacked his country. In this way, it is equivalent to omitting all the previous cumbersome procedures. The navy only needs to notify nearby warships to rush over. But in fact, Cass and his gang had just raised the pirate flag and were not being rewarded by the navy. So, can they be considered pirates? Calculate. Because they flew the pirate flag. According to the regulations of the Navy, as long as the ship is flying the pirate flag or there is a skull pattern painted on the sail, it is a pirate. Even if there is no reward, it can be caught. At most, the reward will be added later. That's it, you don't even need to offer a reward, after all, you've already been caught. So, it can't be said that Cass and others were wronged when they were massacred by Shiryu. It was just like Sakazuki said, they were too stupid, and the king was too smart. While the warship was learning all the details of the mission, the sword Notaki called Reu and Shiryu's hand had already killed all the pirates on the five ships. But just as Sakazuki had speculated before, two ships had gradually sailed away, or were running away frantically for their lives. This caused hot lava to start flowing out of his right arm. Black smoke rolled into the blue sky. As the red lava dripped onto the deck, a thick smell of sulfur filled the air. Swoosh! Just as Sakazuki was about to act, a long and wide scarlet sword light suddenly appeared and flew over the sea at an extremely fast speed, instantly cutting off the main masts and antlers of the two pirate ships. Once the sail fell into the sea, the ship could no longer use the power of the wind to sail, and its speed quickly slowed down. 
it didn't take long for it to float back and forth with the waves, completely turning into a huge wooden coffin on the sea. More than 200 people on board could only watch in despair as the bloodthirsty devil approached. Soon after, there were screams and screams, but they only lasted about 30 seconds before falling into silence again. Very good. Sakazuki's eyes were full of admiration. He originally wanted to let Anigamo be his adjutant, but now this Shiryu is also very good. Since you have hoisted the pirate flag and are planning to form a pirate group, you will be condemned to death and not qualified to continue breathing air. Pirates are all a bunch of damn trash. Dash. Chapter 37, Chapter 37, The King of the Celestial Dragons 1 The night sky in this world is very strange. Through astronomical observations, scholars have determined that there are as many as eight satellites orbiting this blue planet. However, when darkness falls, only the moon shines brightest among the stars. Doflamingo walked out of the bondola, and a gust of cold night wind blew his pink flamingo coat. But he found that there was not even a Holy Land garrison standing guard nearby, which made him laugh in a low voice while looking at the huge stairs leading to the upper level in front of him. Although so many years have passed, there is really no change here, but can power really be as immortal as these stone steps? Let's go, the lords are waiting for you. Come on, the lords are waiting for you. The white-clothed CP0 member who went to the North Blue especially to invite Doflamingo urged at this time, then he walked past the former and took a step forward on the way to the huge stairs. A few months later, 200 kings from the participating countries will also pass through here, and then gather in the Round Table Council Room in Pangaea Castle to discuss and decide on major issues affecting the entire world. At this moment, there are only the two of them, one behind the other. Climbing to the top of the huge stairs, you will arrive at the real Mary Gioase. This place is called the Holy Land. Even the ground under your feet is clean and tidy, as if every particle of gravel has been washed. Doflamingo looked up and looked into the distance. Although it was night, the unknown number of lights of different types already illuminated the entire Mary Gioase as if it were daytime. Even the rows of trees and the river were shining with a faint golden light. 1. This is truly magnificent and brightly lit. Seeing this scene, his body was trembling faintly, because he was trying to suppress the anger and desire in his heart. He was supposed to live here, high up, doing whatever he wanted, overlooking all the humans below. Although it was only a few years ago, it has to be said that Doflamingo's happiest childhood was actually in this place. Here, the waiters bowed their heads before him the slaves knelt before him, he could eat endless delicacies in different ways every day, he had infinite wealth so he didn't have to worry about money and he could kill anyone at any time, except his companions of supreme power. These all originally belonged to him. Until that extremely stupid idiot used his ridiculous naivety to destroy everything and take away everything. His mother died because of him, and his brother also disappeared. Although I personally shot that bastard at that time, what I lost is something I can no longer possess. Doflamingo followed CP0 onto the escalator, letting the underground slaves get up for him late at night and push the heavy stone road desperately for him. Doflamingo doesn't actually know all this, but given his character, even if he knew it, he would only enjoy it and have no other thoughts. Because he should be high and mighty. On the way. Doflamingo saw the large iron gate leading to the domain of the gods from a distance. The Holy Land garrison at that place was still standing guard. He knew that his former home was there. He only gave it a cursory glance, and then his attention was focused on the huge castle that was getting closer and closer, Pangaea Castle that represented the center of power in the world. Hey, hey, I hope you won't let me down this time. Doflamingo pursed his lips subconsciously, feeling a little nervous. He is only 17 years old this year and is still very immature in terms of character, cunning, and strength. Even in terms of influence, he only has power over a small remote corner in the North Blue. Not long after, Doflamingo arrived in front of Pangaea Castle, and the huge main gate made of steel slowly rose. 
To be honest, everything became strange when he got here. After all, the last time he was here he was just a child. So, he could only be on guard and follow CP0 silently, while he kept his vigilance on the surrounding environment. This city within a city has quite a large space inside, but for some reason, I still haven't seen a single soldier patrolling or standing guard, and it's very quiet. Until he was brought to a cold, dark, and empty hall, only the golden and red throne on the three-story majestic stone platform shone brightly in the direct moonlight. Only there was no one upstairs. I'm not here to see the five elders, hey. Da Flamingo had just scanned the surroundings, and when he turned around to ask, he immediately found that the other party was gone. Boom. At this moment, the door behind him closed heavily, which stimulated his whole body. His fingers turned into claws, his body bent, and his whole body instantly entered a fighting state. Even the hacky he had just mastered was ready to be used. Da Flamingo now seriously suspects that this is a trap, a trap set by the celestial dragons for himself. He was like a wild cat in a cage, looking around at every move with its teeth and claws, and there were thin threads faintly fluttering between his fingers. The atmosphere became very tense and uncomfortable, as if the air had frozen at that moment, but time continued to pass slowly like water flowing in a river. Until Da Flamingo once again looked at the empty throne above his head. Um. But just a look like that left him in shock. He froze in place, as if he had been affected by a stun effect. The eyes under his sunglasses opened wide, and his pupils were fixed on the figure of the person who, unbeknownst to him, was sitting on the throne. What scared him the most was not that. The key thing was that when his eyes met those of the person above, his spirit seemed to have received an invisible and substantial impact, and a strong sense of fear washed over him repeatedly. He only felt that he was spinning wildly in a golden rippled world, and the surrounding air was vibrating and gradually becoming heavier. Every muscle in his body was shaking with pain, and he was mentally terrified. Da Flamingo couldn't resist for even two seconds. He knelt suddenly and could only support himself with his arms. He remained leaning on the cold floor, gritting his teeth and trying to lift his head. But the invisible weight on his body caused his head, with protruding veins, to lean down and stare at the flawless gorgeous red carpet in front of him. 2. Who is this guy? The five elders? How could there be such a terrifying person who could make me fall to my knees with just one look? It's me who wants to see you, little Don Quixote. As soon as he finished speaking, Da Flamingo felt that the pressure on his body had been relieved a lot. But when he panted heavily and was ready to get up, the air around his body solidified like a mountain that did not allow him to move at all. This forced him to remain in a kneeling position unless he was willing to lie flat on the ground. You, who are you? Da Flamingo struggled to spit out one word after another. The feeling of fear surrounding his heart really made him extremely painful. As for the heavy pressure on his body, he also found that as long as there was no thought of getting up, the air was still ordinary air. Such a magical method, he subconsciously thought it was some kind of devil fruit ability. I am your king. Incomparably cold words came down from the empty throne and rippled through the empty hall. The king of the celestial dragons. 3. Dash. Chapter 38, Chapter 38 the birth of the Kashisha Bukai. The king of the celestial dragons. Da Flamingo, who was forced to kneel down, was stunned for a moment when he heard this. He thought the other person was someone from the five elders. But now it seems that this is not the case. Or does it mean that there are five people in this so-called king? He 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 he. Even in such a terrifying situation, Da Flamingo could still find a way to laugh but his pale face and the cold sweat that turned into beads on his forehead made him look very embarrassed. Then, King of the Celestial Dragons, you, oh no, why do you want to ask me for anything? I stopped being a Celestial Dragon a long time ago. The pressure on his body suddenly decreased and he was finally able to speak normally, except that the heavy breathing was intermittent. From the moment you kneel down, 
your qualifications as a celestial dragon have been restored. The person at the top replied lightly. Doflamingo pondered this sentence. I always feel that the meaning of this sentence is that only heavenly dragons are qualified to kneel before him, so when he kneeled, he regained the identity of a heavenly dragon. Truly arrogant. 2. This is his second impression of the other party. The first impression is that he is extremely powerful. Don Quixote da Flamingo, I grant you the honor of being in Kashisha Bukai, and you have the qualifications to receive direct orders from me. This is another extremely arrogant sentence, containing strong words that cannot be rejected. What is Kashisha Bukai? Da Flamingo raised his doubts, but this time he didn't hear a reply for a long time, which made him hesitate. After about ten minutes, he cautiously tried to raise his head. Immediately, he found that everything was back to normal, and there was no one on the empty throne. When he left, Doflamingo stood up with an extremely ugly face, feeling that everything he had just experienced was too inexplicable. The King of the Celestial Dragons Kashi Shibukai By the way, I easily regained my identity as a celestial dragon. What should he say? What should he do next, just go back like this? Just when Doflamingo was in a dilemma, the door behind him slowly opened again, and this time he turned around immediately. But just when he was about to take precautions, he found five middle-aged men in white robes appearing in front of him. Relax, little one. We are the five elders you want to see. Doflamingo complained in his heart when he heard this. Didn't you invite me here? How come I want to see you? But he was relieved in his heart, finally having someone with whom he could talk normally. Let's go and sit at our place. We will explain the specific situation to you clearly. He 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 in that case, why do you five have to come in person? Can't you just ask someone to take me there? Doflamingo sneered. In Pangia Castle. Everything involving Lord Imu is carried out personally by the five of us. The bald old man holding a long sword and wearing a white kimono said expressionlessly, and then the five people turned around and left the hall again in tacit agreement. Seeing this, Doflamingo could only follow them. In fact, he was full of question marks. Not long after, he followed the five elders into a luxurious and spacious room especially the sofa set in the center that was even more eye-catching. The five people in front were seen sitting back in their usual positions. Among them, St. Topman Warkuri, who was sitting in the middle, pointed to the sofa that was still empty. You can just sit there. Doflamingo had no objection and sat down on the sofa with an arrogant step. He sat on the sofa in a very relaxed manner. By the way, this is the first time that someone who is not a member of the five elders sits on the sofa in this room of authority. That's really an honor Doflamingo crossed his legs and grinned. There is no need to be honored. You are now the envoy of Lord Imu, a member of the Kashisha Bukai, and have restored your identity as a celestial dragon. You are fully qualified to sit with us. Saint Shepherd Jew Peter said with a smile. Then let's talk about it, who is this Imusama? and what is the Kashisha Bukai? Doflamingo was still young and couldn't help but asked anxiously. It was true that his mind had been greatly impacted and he really couldn't calm down. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, we will explain one by one. Among the five elders, Saint Topman Warkuri seems to be the main one. His voice sounds the most calm and majestic, giving people a vague sense of oppression. Lord Imu is our master, the king of all the celestial dragons, the founder of the world government and its true controller. The supreme existence of the past, present and future, if there must be a god in this world, then this is the only god in the long history. His tone was full of fanatical admiration, and his expression during the introduction was like an extremely religious man trying his best to suppress the excitement in his heart. Although the other four did not speak, the brilliance in their eyes was the same. Although Doflamingo has just experienced the horror of Imu, he has not lived in Mary Gosa since he was a child, and he has not been exposed to the most secret history. Therefore, he has no feelings for Imu. 
my mood is more of fear and apprehension. Among them, regarding this introduction, he grasped the key point immediately, he is the founder of world government. Doesn't this mean that the man sitting on the empty throne is very likely to have lived from 800 years ago to the present? Thinking of this, Da Flamingo's heart became even heavier. So, what is the Kashisha Bukai? As I said just now, Kashisha Bukai is the envoy of Imusama. Not only is he qualified to talk to us directly, but he is also qualified to receive direct orders from him. But you need to keep this identity a secret, and the same goes for your restoration of the celestial dragon identity. Hearing this, Da Flamingo understood and said with a smile, Hey, he seems to want me to do something for him. Everyone has value, right? Okay, okay, let's talk about it, what do you want me to do? Da Flamingo relaxed and lay down on the soft sofa behind him. You have to maintain your current external identity, penetrate the underworld, and provide us with the information we need. Of course, we will also provide you with the necessary help during this period. St. Topman Warkuri said directly. Da Flamingo laughed after hearing this. Isn't this what he wanted to do? Becoming a big figure in the underworld is his first goal but now he has an additional task of providing intelligence to the world government. The important thing is that he can still get secret help from the five elders. It seems that no matter how you look at it, this benefits him greatly. Okay, I agree. That's good, you can take this. I will contact you through it for anything in the future. He saw St. Topman Warkuri taking out a golden den den mushy with black circles printed on its body. Da Flamingo took it and put it on his palm and looked at it twice. At this moment, the other party suddenly said something that made his heart tremble. By the way, your brother Don Quixote Rosinanti is in Marine Ford at this time. You caught him. Da Flamingo's relaxed face darkened instantly, his voice lowered, and his attitude became bad. If this is the case, then he should stay in the Holy Land prison or impel down. St. Marcus Mars sighed from the side. Don't worry, that little guy is very lucky. He met Sengoku and was adopted as a foster son. However, his personality is completely opposite to yours. He obviously has the same experience as you, but he is a very kind child. This is really a very strange thing. Da Flamingo pursed his lips and remained silent for a moment, then stood up and said with a stern face, Is that all? If so, I'll leave. And you don't need to fire me. Dash. Chapter 39, Chapter 39, Fishman Island Marine Base Since Da Flamingo left Mary Goa two months have passed in the Golden River of Time, and it is now mid-April. However, for people living on the Grand Line, months are really just months and have nothing to do with climate and seasons. And the levelly in June is getting closer. Your Majesty, since February of this year, the number of incidents of pirates entering and trying to kidnap mermaids has been increasing. It has become more serious since this month. Four incidents occurred in just two weeks. Fortunately, the Ammonites arrived in time. They were rescued, but more than a hundred soldiers were injured. I believe that if this continues, the situation will become increasingly uncontrollable. In the luxurious hall of Ryugu Palace on Fishman Island, the Minister of the Left looked at King Neptune on stage with concern. It's all because of the rumor about One Piece's great treasure. King Neptune covered his forehead in distress. Now this rumor was so widespread that even he, who was 10,000 meters under the sea, knew about it. But what can we do? The basic strength of fishmen is indeed ten times that of humans but how can those pirates who have traveled all the way through the first half of the Grand Line and arrived here be ordinary people? In the final analysis, we still don't have a strong person to take charge. Hearing what the king said, the minister of the left had nothing to say. The soldiers of the Ammonites are not weak, but they are simply not strong enough. Let's not talk about the New World, they are not even very powerful in paradise. I pay homage to your majesty. At this moment, the Minister of the Right hurried in and reported, Your Majesty, 
the world government ships, and the warships of the navy are waiting for entry outside the main gate. Quickly, let them in immediately. King Neptune's eyes lit up, and his mood gradually became excited. He had a hunch that the current problems facing Fishman Island would be solved soon. After half an hour that greatly tormented the king, Carlson, and a tall naval commander, whom he had met before, walked into the hall. Welcome, welcome, welcome Director Carlson to visit our Fishman Island again. King Neptune looked very happy and enthusiastic. Long time no see, Your Majesty the King. Carlson showed his signature smile and then introduced the people around him. 2. This is Vice Admiral Cusin from the Navy Headquarters, and he is also the new candidate for Admiral. 1. Cusin looked at the giant king sitting on the throne and greeted him politely. Hello, I'm Cusin. Allow me to express my warmest greetings, Your Majesty. Uh, hello, hello. King Neptune didn't know what to say, so he turned to Carlson and asked, What are you two here for? Carlson maintained a gentle smile on his face. According to the previously signed communique on the establishment of equal and friendly relations between humans and the Merfolk tribe and the Fishman tribe, I have brought back all the Merfolk and Fishmen that were in both Mary Gosa and the affiliated nations. Your Majesty can send personnel to receive them. Really? King Neptune immediately stood up and excitedly ordered the minister of the left next to him to come and see him. Take someone to see them quickly. Yes, I will do it now. The minister of the left was also very excited. In the past, it was simply wishful thinking and a daydream for the celestial dragons and the nobles to return the merfolk they bought. Seeing the figure of the minister of the left disappear outside the hall door, King Neptune expressed his gratitude to Carlson and the world government from the bottom of his heart. Seeing this, Cusin on the side sighed in his heart. Although he didn't know the reason, the world government seemed to have changed a lot recently. The Drum Kingdom was like this, and the Fishman Island was like this too. These were all acts of justice that he had witnessed with his own eyes and even participated in. This made Cusin, whose blood had not yet cooled down, unknowingly have a much better impression of the world government. Carlson waited for King Neptune's excitement to calm down and spoke again, Your Majesty. In addition to helping with the escort this time, Vice Admiral Cusin is also preparing to build a marine branch on Fishman Island. In the next few years, he will be responsible for the relevant matters. A marine base. King Neptune was stunned, and immediately remembered that there was indeed such an article in the communique, and asked, How many people will the Navy station here, and where will the branch be built? Carlson did not reply to this question but Cusin was responsible for the answer, the tentative plan is that I will bring the first batch of a thousand Marines Headquarters Navy to the Fishman Island. After the construction of the main facilities of the branch is completed, follow-up 4,000 Marines will be stationed. After he finished speaking, Carlson continued. The construction project of the Marine branch is managed by the construction team brought by our administration department. As for the location of the branch, we still need to wait for professionals to inspect it before making a decision. I hope that Fishman Island can provide some support. Ha ha ha, of course it's no problem, but I thought they wouldn't come at least until after the levelly. King Neptune laughed enthusiastically. If everything goes well, according to the construction period, construction will start from now and it will be almost completed after the levelly. Carlson said with a smile. I understand. Where will Vice Admiral Cusin and the Navy be stationed before the branch facilities are completed? King Neptune asked doubtfully. Cusin replied, During this period, we will live in the warship to ensure that it will not affect the residents. How can this be done? Although our Fishman Island is not big, we still have a little space to accommodate a thousand people. King Neptune was naturally unwilling to treat Cusin and the Navy so poorly. He knew very well that his citizens would be dependent on each other's protection for a long time to come. In this way, Minister of the Right, you can temporarily station the Navy in Waterwheel Town in the north, and then ask the craftsmen to quickly build a batch of shell houses. Yes, Your Majesty. 
That would be troublesome. 2. Kuzan thanked him politely, and then followed the Minister of the Right out, but Kaolson who stayed behind did not leave immediately. Your Majesty Neptune, according to the communique, Fishman Island can also station troops in the Sabayati archipelago, and we have vacated Area 62. King Neptune scratched the back of his head in embarrassment and said with a smile, Ah, this. I'm sorry, we thought this matter would not be carried out until after the levelly is over, so we haven't had time to discuss it yet. Kaolson didn't care, just nodded, and continued, There is also the matter of sending merfolk or fishmen to join the world government, the navy, and other departments. This time I have brought the quantity and number of fishmen that the navy wants to incorporate as well as a list of main fishmen. Oh? Tell me. King Neptune was curious about how many fishmen the Navy would allow to join, and who the so-called main fishmen were. The Navy headquarters will introduce the first batch of 200 fishmen or merfolk. Among them, the mermaids will mainly do civilian work, while the fishmen will form the fishman army. As he spoke, Kaolson took out a piece of white paper from his arms and recorded the names of several fishmen on it. The important fishmen are Fisher Tiger, Jimbe, and Aladine. King Neptune was stunned for a moment when he heard these three names, and then looked confused. I've heard of Fisher Tiger, but Jimbe, and Aladine, who are these? According to intelligence, Jimbe, the 22-year-old large blue whale shark fishman, and the goat's beard Brotola Merman Aladin are serving as soldier of the Ryugu kingdom. Outside, the minister of the left looked at the merfolk and fishmen who got off the world government's ship strangely. Looks like nothing on the outside, no injuries, disabilities or anything like that, but aren't their cheerful and smiling faces too optimistic? They were slaves before. However, the minister of the left could only shake his head in the end thinking that these people were so happy. 1. After all, it is indeed a blessing to be able to return to Fishman Island alive. Dash. Chapter 40, Chapter 40, Paramecia Type Munch Munch Fruit 2. Mary Goa Imu was looking at various reports sent by the five elders. After all, he has decided to personally take charge of the world government. This kind of work is definitely indispensable. 1. As for the Drum Kingdom, the ice stairs and the ice bridge connecting the Drum Rockies were completed thanks to Kuzan's efforts. Judging from the photos, they are extremely majestic and spectacular. They sparkle in the sun and are simply like miraculous works of art. Especially the ice staircase, because it is a full 5,000 meters high, so the size and scale of the stairs are very exaggerated almost surrounding half of drum rock, and there are very spacious platforms every kilometer. It is said that the construction team of the administration department is not only building the facilities of the medical school and world hospital, but also building some small buildings, pavilions, and chairs on these platforms for people to rest. But even so, the difficulty is not small. After all, the construction materials have to be moved to a 5,000-meter mountain peak. As for Jaya Island, it has now become a breeding base for south birds. In the future, it is planned to become the world's largest zoo, where all kinds of rare animals will be raised. It will also be the largest research place for zoologists. As for the islands the security work is left to the Navy, because there is a G branch of the Navy around it. Let's look at the situation in the capital of water. Imu picked up the report and read it carefully. Generally speaking, everything was going smoothly. The Hulk Island where hundreds of broken ships were originally piled has now been cleaned up by the construction team of the administration department, and new ones are being built as soon as possible. The reason why we need to hurry up is because the report mentions that every year in June or July, storms and high tides occur in Water 7. 1. So, they must build a building facility that can withstand the impact of the Aqua Laguna. To this end, the administration department even applied for technical support from the special science group. Seeing this, Imu frowned and murmured in a low voice, Aqua Laguna. This is indeed a big trouble. 
This capital of water has been the main manufacturing plant for naval warships in the past, and in the future, it will be the R&D and manufacturing plant for sea trains. Especially the latter is related to the transportation issues of the affiliated nations under the entire world government and must be taken seriously. We have to find a way to solve it, otherwise we won't be able to face Aqua Laguna year after year. But for a while, Imu had no idea, so he had no choice but to put the report back on the coffee table and pick up another report. 3. This is about the progress of the renovation of the Thriller Bark. Originally, the administrative department wanted to bring it to the Water 7 and then spend money to hire the best shipwrights to build it. Only after inspection by professionals, it was found that its renovation basically had nothing to do with shipwrights but required a large number of construction craftsmen. Therefore, this super sailing ship, which is called a ship but can be called an island in scale, is currently being repaired, transformed and renovated by a large number of craftsmen in a secret location close to the Red Line. From the plan, the Gothic castles above will be painted white, and the woods will be cleared and turned into naval training grounds and dormitories. However, the construction period is a bit long. It is said that it will take about six months. 1. This makes Imu a little unhappy. Now the situation at sea is becoming more and more chaotic. Because of the rumors of the big treasure, the number of pirates has increased significantly. At present, several naval G bases in the first half of the Grand Line are extremely busy, especially with bounty orders being sent out by the dozen. So, this reverse mountain marine branch base is very critical. The next few reports included the opinions of Dr. Kurha and many outstanding doctors from the Drum Kingdom on Amber Lead Syndrome, Shiryu's performance after becoming Sakazuki's adjutant, and Monkey D. Dragon's report to the Five Elders. Shiryu's matter is not important. With Sakazuki around, there is no fear that he will not be able to control him. Imu pays more attention to the matter of Amber Lead Syndrome and Dragon. Let's start with the first thing. Kurha and others have personally reviewed the conditions of patients secretly sent by CP4 from North Blue. 1. They found that this was a typical symptom of chronic heavy metal poisoning, but the weird thing about this amber lead is that it can be passed on to the next generation. Logically speaking, heavy metal poisoning is unlikely to be hereditary, but it does happen, and it is not inherited at one time, but continues to be inherited. However, these doctors with outstanding medical skills discovered that the amber lead is mainly concentrated in the patient's liver, and Dr. Kurha, attempted to remove the amber lead from the liver through a miraculous operation. But the final result is not optimistic. They then tried to treat it with medications, but the existing specific medications for heavy metal poisoning were not very effective, so they had to develop a new medication specifically for amber lead. The time it will take is completely unknown. Since conventional medical methods are not effective, it is better to try the extraordinary ability of devil fruit. The first thing Imu thought of was, of course, the OPOP fruit. In the One Piece series, didn't Trafalgar Law depend on this fruit to heal himself? But now, who knows what part of the North Blue it will be in. There is also the heal heal fruit of Paramecia type devil fruit. 1. Hey! The little princess man's Harry may not be born yet, but I can send CP6 to Green Bit to find this heel heel fruit. Imu began to ponder, if possible, of course, he hopes to have such an impressive devil fruit in his hands, and the Taunt Atta tribe itself also has great value. They are the best plant growers in the world and their tribe can grow any plant. However, the problem is that the Taunt Atta tribe are said to have had enmity with the Dongquik Sodi family for 900 years, so they hate each other and probably don't have a good impression of the other celestial dragons. This is a bit annoying. By the way, you can also find future Princess Violet's Glare Glare fruit. What is the concept of an observation radius of 4000 kilometers? TOC, TOC, TOC. Just when Imu felt more and more that the kingdom of Dress Rosa was a treasure, the door of the treehouse was knocked softly and at the same time, the image of the one knocking on the door appeared in his mind through Kanbuncho Kohaki. Come in. 
he saw a charming maid walking and carrying a silver wooden box, but she only dared to stand on the edge of the door. Sir, this is what the five elders asked me to hand over to you. It is said to be the paramecia type munch munch fruit that CP5 found in the drum kingdom. Munch munch fruit. Imma was greatly surprised. This is a good thing. Before, just in case, he asked the five elders to send people to search for it secretly. Unexpectedly, they found it, but he still maintained a natural calm on the surface. You can leave it. Yes. The maid came in and put the wooden box on the coffee table, then exited the wooden house respectfully, closing the door again. Imu also took out the munch munch fruit and squinted to see a purple plum shaped fruit that is split by a zigzag pattern in the center, giving it the appearance of a set of jaws. It has a green, curly stem at the top and the typical swirl patterns on its peel. 1. It can perfectly fuse organic and inorganic substances together and can even swallow people with abilities to gain their abilities. This thing can benefit the entire civilization if used properly but you have to carefully consider who to give it to. But then again, I have found the munch munch fruit, but what about the human human fruit? 2. When I think of this, Imu is a little confused. I don't know whether I hope to find the latter or not, because if I find it, wouldn't Chopper be gone? 4. Dash. Chapter 41, Chapter 41, Dragon's First Mission. For Imu. The Zoan type human human fruit is not an important thing. The ability of this devil fruit has actually been shown based on the performance of Sengoku. The human human fruit, model, Buddha of a mythical Zoan type. After eating it, the person with the ability can transform into the form of a golden Buddha. Both palms can release shock waves. In addition, they will also have the wisdom and spirit like the Buddha. So, the ordinary human human fruit, after being eaten by a normal person, will not have the ability to transform, but its main effect is to strengthen physical, intellectual, mental and other aspects, turning into a truly perfect superman. 5. To be honest, this devil fruit is actually more suitable for academic or scientific researchers than for use in combat. The key is that it is related to the birth of Chopper. It's not that he wants a cute pet but according to the future timeline of the One Piece series, Chopper will probably develop the so-called panacea that can cure all diseases. 2. Although it sounds incredible, there are some miraculous black technologies in this world, and what Emma values is this panacea. But the question is, even if Chopper successfully ate the human human fruit, would he have been able to develop a panacea without the subsequent experiences? Would he even have thought of developing a panacea? Now the entire drum kingdom has undergone tremendous changes because of my intervention. Even if Chopper appears, will he still be Chopper? 1. Imu fell into deep thought for a while. One has to admit the fact that his appearance will definitely lead to a change in the fate of many people. What he can do is to guide some important people to have a better growth environment. Imu's eyes returned to the munch munch fruit. It stands to reason that based on the ability of this devil fruit, the first candidate who is most suitable for it should be Dr. Vegapunk. 1. With it, and some guidance from him, maybe both pacifists and artificial devil fruits can appear in advance. But the question now is what is Vegapunk's attitude towards the world government? It is not clear yet, but it is still the same question that has occurred to him before. Why should he conceal the fact that he successfully copied the perfect artificial devil fruit in the future? Look first, then wait. Imu thought for a while and put the munch munch fruit back into the silver box, then closed the lid and put it aside, and then picked up the letter from Dragon to the five elders. After reading the content in two minutes, it was as expected. Perhaps because it was the first time, he wrote a letter, Dragon's wording was a little cautious. I couldn't help but pointed it out. What's wrong with world government, and the discontent comes to the fore. The main dissatisfaction centered on the slaves. That's good. Writing a letter can be considered as releasing your emotions. It's better than keeping them in your heart. Imu smiled. 2. 
but the other side should start taking action. I think this kid is in shock now. But he has to think about the arrangements for Dragon. Is it more appropriate to keep him in the Navy, or to transfer him to another place? Marine Headquarters, Marine Ford Five sea beast-like warships formed a triangular formation and slowly sailed out of the large open iron gate. The waves rolled over them, forming three long white stripes. On the deck, Monkey D. Dragon stared blankly at the reclosed gate of justice at the rear. He still feels incredible about the task he received this time. As for the presence of the silent men in white on both sides, he has become completely accustomed to it these days. Dragon was seen looking at the mission report in his hand again. The mission location is Thutmosa Island in the South Blue. According to the report, this is a medium-sized island. The environment on the island is mainly desert and hills. Although there are four seasons, there is very little rain. The target of the mission, Taklama, is the king of the kingdom of Thutmosa and one of the affiliated nations of the world government. However, he does not have a seat in the levelly. He is a king with a low sense of existence and few citizens. Through various CP2 investigations, the strangeness of this country in recent years was discovered. Obviously, it looks like a poor and small country, but the annual heavenly tribute is paid in full, and there has been no accident for decades. Also, there are basically no ships coming and going during the day, but it becomes livelier at night with nearly a hundred ships of various sizes coming in and out, and they are also scattered to more than a dozen ports on the island. Recently, CP2 finally made a major discovery and discovered the second identity of King Taklama. The King of the Slaves of the Underworld. The entire kingdom of Thutmosa is the world's largest slave supply station and the world's largest kidnapping group. It has tens of thousands of slave catchers scattered in various sea areas for long-term kidnapping, fraud and other criminal activities. A thorough sweep of the villages was carried out, and there were still about 30,000 slave troops in the country. It is said that CP2 paid the sacrifice of more than a dozen members to find out that the main facilities and personnel of the Thutmosa kingdom are actually inside the island. There are hundreds of large cells for holding slaves. After visual inspection, it is enough there were hundreds of thousands of captured slaves. It can be said that this kingdom actually has no concept of citizens, and even the concept of king is very vague, because they are a very professional company system. Taklama prefers to have the people below call him boss instead of king when he is on his own island. 1. So rather than being a citizen, it is more appropriate to say that it is an employee. The goal of this mission is to capture King Taklama. If the remaining criminals resist, they are allowed to be killed on the spot and all the slaves are rescued. It also says that the rescued slaves will be led by the administration department to be organized in nearby kingdoms, mobilize ships, food, doctors, and other resources, and finally send them back to their places of origin. In Dragon's view, the world government's plan is complete enough, he just needs to bring the fleet to win this battle. But the more this happened, the more confused and puzzled he became. Is this really the world government? That world government that he sees as hopelessly rotten and devoid of any kindness? This is too just. But no matter what, it is indeed a good thing, and Dragon is willing to work hard for it from the bottom of his heart, even if it is for the hundreds of thousands of suffering slaves. It is worth mentioning that this is the first time that he has led a fleet to carry out a large-scale military mission as the Commander-in-Chief. Mary Gioase, in the Room of Authority, the five elders gathered together. The fleet led by Dragon has already set sail. Saint Shepherd Jew Peter smiled. Saint Topman Warkiri, who was sitting in the middle, touched his bald head, looked at him without smiling, and said, Only one Rear Admiral, Dragon was sent for this operation. I still feel like it's not appropriate. According to intelligence, King Taklama is not weak, and he has a legion of more than 30,000. 1. As for the two CP0s that followed him, they could not be considered as combat effectiveness at all, because their mission was to keep an eye on Dragon, and they would not care about other things at all. 
even if the entire fleet was wiped out, they would only take Dragon with them. It should be fine. After all, he is Garp's son, and he also has the ability of the Storm Fruit, so he will be able to deal with a slave king. Saint Ethan Baron Venus Juro said casually. 4. He was seen carefully holding a talcum stained cotton ball with tweezers, and gradually tapping it on the blade of the Shodei Kaiditsu sword to absorb the excess oil on it. Furthermore, according to the information sent by CP5, Garp, who said he wanted to go back to the East Blue, suddenly turned and entered the South Blue first. Saint Shepherd Jew Peter said. 1. Hearing this, Saint Jagarsha Saturn laughed heartily. This is really not disguised at all, as expected of Garp. 1. At the same time, the other three five elders said no more. Garp is there as backup, what else do they have to worry about? Should they worry about an army of 30,000 people? 1. But the information Doflamingo provided this time is very good. If it weren't for him, we really wouldn't have been able to find the lair of the King of Slaves. 2. Dash. Chapter 42, Chapter 42, Malice of the Fishman District. Fishman Island, Ryugu Palace, Guest Hall. Although I don't know why the Navy wants to name two important fishmen to be introduced, since the other party requests it, and considering this rare friendly cooperation between humans and our Fishman Island, as the King, I still hope that the two of them can consider agreeing. King Neptune was sitting on the throne and expressed his request sincerely to Jimbei and Aladdin who were wearing the uniforms of the Ammonites in the audience. Jimbei and Aladdin looked at each other and saw the determination in each other's eyes, and then spoke in unison with a tacit understanding. Your Majesty, we are willing to accept the Navy's invitation and contribute to the equal friendship between fishman people and humans. Ha, ha. Ha, ha! King Neptune was greatly pleased after hearing this, and he burst out with a heroic laugh and said, That's great, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Then I will introduce the details personally. According to the Navy, after the two of you go to Marine Ford, Jimbe will be given the rank of commander of the headquarters and serve as the leader of the newly formed Fishman unit while Aladeen will be the lieutenant commander of the headquarters and serve as assistant to the leader of the fishman unit. The two of them will also be responsible for teaching fishman karate to the marines stationed here. At the same time, the marine base here will also teach fencing to all the fishman. This is also one of the practical contents that represent equal cooperation. Hearing this, Jimbei said with some hesitation, Your Majesty, with my level of fishman karate, it should be difficult to teach them something. Compared with Brother Tiger, he is more qualified. He is 22 years old this year, and he does have some shortcomings in terms of strength, but it would be purely self-effacing to say that he cannot teach the Marines Fishman Karate. Fisher Tiger, didn't he go out on an adventure again? He hasn't come back yet. King Neptune said helplessly. When he comes back, I will have a good talk. Maybe you can meet in Marine Ford by then. In the meantime, you, Jimbe, will be in charge, okay? This is it, Your Majesty, I will do my best. Jimbe saw that the king was like this and no longer shied away. Aladeen on the side had no objection. He and Jimbe were good friends, and he knew very well that there was a big gap between the two in terms of talent and strength. However, he is very interested in human swordsmanship. Your Majesty. At this moment, the Minister of the Left entered. King Neptune smiled and said, Minister of the Left, what's the matter? Your Majesty, the administrative construction team sent by the world government has decided on the location of the Marine Branch and is starting construction. Oh, where is it? King Neptune asked curiously, while Jimbe and Aladeen were also paying attention. Near the Mermaid Cove, the reason is that the main target of pirates is the Mermaid, so the marine base is located there to protect the mermaids nearby, and there is a surface of land, where the sun still shines and is suitable for human life Minister of the Left said. In this Fishman Island, from top to bottom, 
it is divided into the aristocratic area where Ryugu Palace is located, the civilian area on the surface, and the dark area underwater. It is obvious that the main factor that distinguishes these levels is sunlight. The closer the place is to the sun, the nobler it is. King Neptune smiled and said, they have chosen a good place. Okay, let's do this. Let our craftsmen go over and help. People in the world government may not be familiar with the environment here. Yes, your majesty. The minister of the left was about to go deal with it after receiving the order. At this moment, a soldier from the Ammonite ran in, then half knelt down towards King Neptune and reported loudly. Your Majesty, there has been an incident in Mermaid Cove where fishmen maliciously attacked a human construction team. What? King Neptune, the Minister of the Left, and Jimbei were all shocked. Everyone knew that if it was too serious, they would probably face the wrath and sanctions of the world government. Although the attitude of the world government has become much friendlier recently, it does not mean that they have ignored their past strength and domineering qualities. Minister of the Left, please take someone to see it quickly. Ah, uh, yes, I'll go right away. The Minister of the Left realized and responded hurriedly. At this time, Jimbei on the side said, Your Majesty, can you let Aladine and I follow you and take a look? Yes, yes. Yes, since the Navy values you too, it will definitely help if you go. King Neptune was a little panicked at this time. Soon, the Minister of the Left led Jimbei, Aladine, and a group of 30 Ammonites to the civilian area. Only King Neptune and the Ammonite soldiers standing guard on both sides were left in the hall. Hey, I hope nothing serious happens. A sigh spread throughout this extremely luxurious Ryugu Palace. Twenty minutes ago, Mermaid Cove. As the construction team of the administration department selected a location, hundreds of human workers in uniforms began to clean up and tidy up the environment of the construction site, and at the same time pulled pieces of construction machinery and equipment from the ship through vehicles. Such a lively atmosphere naturally attracted the attention and curiosity of many merfolk and fishmen nearby. They had never seen so many humans since they were born. What are those iron monsters? They also roar. They all wear the same clothes, just like the Ammo Knights. It's so interesting. I heard that they are from that world government, and they even sent back the fishman who were captured before. But what are they going to do? One graceful and elegant mermaid was submerged in the water, while another was sitting sideways on a shell. Her beautiful eyes looked at the construction team coming and going and the navy guarding the area nearby. At the same time, after hearing the news, the number of fishmen who wanted to come over and take a look gradually increased. Their shapes became cruder and stranger, and there was almost no standard size. Some were three or four meters tall, while others were only one or two meters. But what these merfolk and fishmen didn't notice was that their existence was also a rare visual feast for humans such as the construction team and the navy. To these humans, who are basically all male, the mermaids in the bay are like being in a dream in a fairy tale. They are simply beautiful. The key is that all of them are wearing bikinis. As for the fishmen, they only glanced at them briefly to learn about the strange species in this world, and then continued to focus on the mermaids. The result was that neither the construction crew workers nor the navy soldiers noticed the malicious and disdainful glances of some of the fishmen in the crowd. Arlong, how come there are so many of these despicable humans? The fishman put a hand in the pocket of his shorts and whispered in disgust. Indeed, what are those Ammonites troops doing? Kurubi, who had a pair of huge fins on his strong arms, was also dissatisfied. It must be some kind of cooperation between Ryugu Palace and these inferior species. Arlong, who is seventeen years old, clenched his fists angrily, and his eyes were a little red. They are all orphans who grew up in the Fishman district in a dark area and were abandoned by their parents. Therefore, whether it is the environment or human nature, they have been exposed to the darkest side since childhood. Especially Arlong, when he was a child. He yearned for the sunshine and all the beauty in the rumored human world. However, as he grew up, 
the humans he saw were all evil, despicable, and even cowardly. He gradually accepted the view that humans are an inferior race and fishmen are a superior race. He felt that humans were so weak and inferior creatures were not worthy of enjoying those beautiful things and were not even qualified to be on an equal footing with the fishman. We can't let them succeed, we have to stop this. Dash. Chapter 43, Chapter 43, Arlong was trampled. What do we do, Arlong? Yes, we will do it as you say. Arlong looked at Hachin, Kurubi, and the others, and was very happy that they can support him in this way. He then lowered his voice and gave instructions. There are eight of us in total, Hachin, Chu, Kurubi will follow me to deal with the navy, Pisaro, Kane Shiro, Take, and Shioyaki, you are divided into two groups. Two of you will be responsible for destroying the equipment, and the other two will be responsible for attacking the workers. Remember, you have to be fast and pay attention to the sound from my side. As soon as you hear the word retract, you will immediately jump into the water and return to Fishman District, do you understand? 1. In Arlong's view, human beings are too weak, and they only occupy most of the world because of their large number of people. The most important thing is that they can't breathe underwater, so as long as they wait for others to return to the water, they can't do anything. Understood. Hachin, Kurubi, and the other fishmen all nodded. As for the danger of this operation, they did not take it to heart at all. It is common sense that the strength of fishmen is ten times that of humans, not to mention that they are stronger than ordinary fishmen. What is worth mentioning are the muskets in the hands of humans and how to avoid being caught by the ammo knights. Soon, the eight fishmen divided into two waves one of which silently circled the crowd on the other side. They were preparing for a two-sided attack. At this time, groups of workers from the construction team carried toolboxes and followed the vehicles, slowly heading to the construction site under the watchers of a large number of merfolk and fishmen. Even the navy in charge of the guard did not suspect anything. The scene of this mermaid harbor was so beautiful that some navy soldiers even inadvertently looked at each other with a beautiful mermaid lady. Both parties were surprised, and she blushed in amusement. Mermaids are curious about humans, and humans are also curious about mermaids. At this moment, an unexpected incident occurred. Four sturdy black figures jumped out from the crowd of fishmen on both sides, charging maliciously towards the vehicles and workers in the middle of the road. Who are they? Stop! The surrounding marines were all from Marine Ford, and even if they were a little lax, it wouldn't be too outrageous. They immediately raised their guns or draw their swords to try to intercept the opponent. At the same time, Arlong, Hachin, Chu, and Kurubi took advantage of everyone's attention being focused on the other four and took action without hesitation. Bam! Ah! Almost at the same time, four marines were hit hard and fell to the ground with barely time to scream. Some fainted on the spot, while others moaned, covering themselves with their hands where they were hit. Ah! It's Arlong's group. 1. Why do they do this? 1. The surrounding merfolk and fishmen were all exclaiming, and some who recognized Arlong, and others showed disgust. These eight people had been doing random things a few years ago and had long been regarded by the merfolk and fishmen of Fishman Island as rogue gangster. However, faced with such a big fight, they did not dare to stand around and watch any more, and quickly dispersed. Some of them jumped into the water and swam away quickly for fear of getting into trouble. As a result, the situation on the scene became even more chaotic. In less than a minute, a dozen construction team workers were attacked, and an excavator with the world government logo was overturned by Kane Shiro and Pisaro with their bare hands and then the tires were blown out with one punch. Let's get em. The navy in the distance noticed the situation and was quickly coming to support. Arlong, who noticed this scene, knocked down four more marines and shouted loudly. Withdraw. As soon as he finished speaking, he turned around without hesitation and was about to leave, but at this moment, the navy who was closer was already in place. A roar sounded. 
A man was seen wearing the same blue trousers as a marine, but a close-fitting yellow t-shirt on his upper body, plus a white vest and a navy hat. The sturdy sailor, who was about 1.8 meters tall, approached the soldier at a brisk speed. At the same time, his right fist, which was already charged, stabbed his face with a cold iron finger through the air. Humph! Arlong looked at the short human being with disdain. Although he was only 17 years old, his talent as a saucehark made him stand 2 meters 40 centimeters tall, and he was still growing. 1. Arlong, showing no signs of weakness, thrust his bull-sized fist forward, colliding with the marine's iron finger in the air. Suddenly, there was a dull sound and at the place where they collided, waves spread like an explosion. How can this be? Arlong looked in surprise at the human marine, which only retreated four or five meters after the fist fight with him. It seemed that the human marine had not changed much. When could the power of humans equal that of fishmen? 2. As ignorant as he was, he had no idea that the claim that the strength of fishmen is ten times that of humans is limited to ordinary fishmen and ordinary humans who have not received any training and are less than 1.8 meters. 2. And the marine in front of him, although he is only a little over 1.8 meters tall, is actually a second lieutenant from the headquarters. In terms of strength alone, he is completely enough to suppress ordinary fishmen. At this time, the second lieutenant flicked his wrist and sneered, You look quite big, but your strength is not that great, and fishmen can't even feed themselves enough, right? How dare you, an inferior race, mock the superior fishmen? Just one sentence completely angered Arlong, and he rushed over without saying a word. At this time, he was at the most impulsive and extreme age. He was so provoked by the inferior people in his eyes. At this time, he only thought about how to torture the other person to death. But he didn't notice that Hachin, Chu, Kurubi and others were also entangled by the marines. For a time, more than a dozen people almost turned into afterimages and fought fiercely together. At the same time, there were more and more naval soldiers with guns around. Finally, a naval lieutenant commander wearing a cape of justice rushed over. He first took a look at the group battle in the field, and then asked a Marine about the situation. Officer Hodgson, through conversations with several fishmen, we have basically understood that these eight fishman thugs are a gangster group from Fishman District. They are said to be extreme racists and consider us humans an inferior race. The Marine said angrily. What? We humans are an inferior race. Officer Hodgson who is more than two meters tall and has brown-red hair, felt incredible when he heard this. How could he remember that the fishman race was not even considered a race of intelligent beings but was regarded as fish? 2. It was only 200 years ago that it was treated as a subhuman race, and even now many humans have not changed their minds. 1. The officer observed the battle situation for more than 10 seconds, and then shook his head. Although these lieutenants have good strength, it is almost impossible to capture these fishman thugs in a short time. The most important thing now is to restore the construction order. It would be his dereliction of duty to cause trouble for too long. Whoosh! The officer disappeared in an instant, and the next second, he appeared in front of Arlong's eyes. The latter only felt that his vision went dark, and before he could react, a heavy kick hit his head. There was a loud bang, and Arlong fell to the ground with his head first. Due to the excessive force, he almost fainted, but he was dizzy and in pain. Just then, a shiny black leather boot stepped on his head. Hey, this is your boss, right? Officer Hodgson stepped on Arlong and said hello to Hachin, Kurubi and the other fishmen. The group subconsciously turned their heads to take a look, and immediately stopped fighting in shock. Arlong. Dash. Chapter 44, Chapter 44, Who is the best swordsman in the Navy? 3. Southeast of the civilian area of Fishman Island, on the outskirts of the port town called Coral Hill. At this time, the lighting of the sunlight tree eve was still bright, but there was a cold wind here, 
and the ground was covered with ice. Only about twenty humans could be seen hugging their frost-covered bodies, shivering together. Under the supervision of the Navy, he quickly walked towards the warship in the distance. This group of pirates has heard that hot water will be provided in the warship, so they can't wait to go to the cell. As for resistance, the thought of struggle has long since disappeared. 1. Are you kidding? He is a candidate for Navy Admiral and is also a Logia-type Devil Fruit user. They can only blame themselves for being unlucky, right? On the other side, Kuzan was talking to three female mermaids. Strictly speaking, they were two young mermaids and a mermaid girl. Human brother, thank you very much for saving us, but you made it so cold here. Are these crystal-like things ice? The little black-haired girl, who looked to be only four or five years old, asked excitedly with her gums trembling. At the same time, she squeezed her small body into her sister's majestic breasts, trying to find more warmth. One. Ah, la, la, la is this your first time seeing ice? By the way, my name is Kuzan, what is your name? Kuzan showed a cheerful smile. Just now. He rescued the three mermaids in front of him from the pirates. Such a righteous act made him feel very happy, which made him feel the blood in his body heating up. 1. My name is Charlie. This is Sister Emily and Sister Winnie. How are they? They are very beautiful. Let's see if you can date them, big human brother. The truth is that this little girl was very lively. She introduced her before the two sisters. She looked up at Kuzan naughtily and smiled mischievously. At the same time, she secretly complained in her heart. Isn't this big brother a human? Why is he so tall? He is much taller than many fishman brothers, much, much taller. 1. Hey, Xiarli Chan, don't talk nonsense. The mermaid sister who was holding Xiarli was blushing, and at the same time she quietly looked at Kuzan's appearance. He is tall, strong, and powerful, and he seems to be a high-ranking officer in the Navy. His personality seems to be good, cheerful, and gentle. Vice Admiral Kuzan At this moment, a Marine ran over and said urgently, Vice Admiral, the construction team of the Mermaid Cove was attacked by a group of fishmen thugs. Hey! Kuzan raised his eyebrows, turned around and asked, Is anyone injured? How many fishmen? I remember that Officer Hodgson is in charge there. Thirteen workers were injured, ten of them were slightly injured, and three were seriously injured and fell into coma. Two excavators were damaged. There was a total of eight fishman thugs, apparently belonging to Arlong's group, who were captured by Officer Hodgson. The Marine was a little out of breath after speaking a long series of words. After a pause, he continued. Officer Hodgson sent word that the minister of the left of Ryugu Palace has brought people, saying that he hopes they will hand over Arlong and his gang to the Ammo Knights for safekeeping, so he hopes you can go take care of that. Kuzan nodded and signaled the other party to return to the team. At the same time, he prepared to say goodbye to the three mermaids. But before he could say anything, Shiarli, who was buried between her sister's breasts, asked nervously, Brother Kuzan, can I go over with you to have a look? Why? Kuzan looked at the other person in confusion. That Arlong seems to be my brother, but I heard from others that he was abandoned by his parents in the orphanage on Fishman District a long time ago. I... I want to see what he looks like. Shiarli said weakly. When Kuzan heard what was going on, he thought about it and said, Okay, but let's make it clear first that no matter what happens to him, you can't stop him. Okay, okay. Shiarli nodded repeatedly. She was just curious about this brother she had never met before. As for her feelings, there was no way to talk about them. Okay, let's go. About twenty minutes later, the warship came to the world government ship docked in the Mermaid Cove again. Kuzan came down with a large group of marines and three mermaids. Vice Admiral Kuzan Officer Hodgson has been waiting for a long time, and beside him are Minister of the Left, 
Jimbei, Aladin and other soldiers of the Ammo Knights. Kuzan glanced at the scene, especially Arlong's group, which was tightly entangled with special steel ropes. Their faces still showed shock, as if they still couldn't believe that the human navy was so strong. Vice Admiral Kuzan, I'm really sorry that such a vicious incident happened. This is our fault on Fishman Island. I have already notified the doctor to come, and I will do my best to treat the injured workers. The minister of the left approached with no intention of hiding the truth and felt extremely sorry. He should have sent some ammo knights to protect them. They just thought that since the navy was responsible for guarding, nothing would happen, and the merfolk and fishmen in their country were actually quite gentle, but they ignored the existence of Fishman District and Arlong's group. Think about it. How can the high-ranking officials and nobles of a country pay attention to a few gangsters at the bottom? Thank you very much. As for this matter, you don't have to blame yourself. In the final analysis, it is my subordinate's dereliction of duty. As for the treatment of Arlong and his gang. 2. Kuzan pondered for a moment. During this process, several people present were waiting for his decision. At the same time, Xiarli looked curiously at Arlong, who looked defeated, curled his lips inwardly, and said to herself, What, he's not handsome at all. She was a little disappointed. After all, the other person was also her biological brother, so she still hoped for a better image. Now it seemed that he was just a ruffian who only made trouble. No wonder his parents didn't want him. 10. In this way, this time I will make the decision to hand over Arlong and his gang to the Ammo Knights. At this time, Kuzan spoke, and the minister of the left looked happy. He was about to thank him when he heard the former continue. But it's just this once. If there are fishmen maliciously attacking Navy or world government personnel next time, we will send them to NIS lobby for trial. I hope you can convey this to King Neptune. Minister of the Left is probably one of the few people on Fishman Island who knows the world government very well. He knew what it meant for someone to be sent to NIS lobby for trial. Impel down. This shocked him. What a terrifying place it was. He had heard of it. It was said to be a hell on earth. Yes, 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 I will tell your majesty, and try our best to prevent this kind of incident from happening again. Next, our Ammonites will also be responsible for security. Vice Admiral Kuzan, you can be sure. Kuzan was very satisfied with the good attitude of Minister of the Left. He ordered Officer Hodgson to closer and said, Leave Arlong and his group with the Ammonites. Yes, Vice Admiral Kuzan. Naturally, the officer had no objections, turned around, dealt with the matter, and handed over the people. Kuzan looked at Jimbei and Aladin and asked with a smile, Are these two the fishmen appointed by Fleet Admiral Kong himself? He had read the relevant information before coming here, and he was very supportive of the formation of the fishman force. The speed and strength of the fishmen in the water were indeed impressive, but he had no interest in fishman karate at all. Yes, I am Jimbei. It is an honor to meet you Vice Admiral Kuzan. Jimbei behaved very steadily and appropriately, and his eyes were very calm, which gave Kuzan a good first impression. I am Aladine, and I am very interested in human swordsmanship. I wonder who the strongest swordsman in the Navy headquarters is. Aladine asked curiously. Swordsmanship. Kuzan was puzzled and thought for a moment. As for swordsmanship, I remember that Sakazuki practiced it for a while before and then stopped using it. Now, it should be Borsalino, right? Other than that, he really can't tell who is the top swordsman in the Navy headquarters, although he occasionally likes to use a sword. 1. Dash. Chapter 45, Chapter 45, World Government Annual Report Within a month, Imo was reading the annual report that the five elders had just sent, the full name of which was the World Government Annual Work Report for the year 1497. To be honest, the previous Imu would not have looked at this kind of thing at all, because to him, 
both the world government and the celestial dragons were just tools to control the entire planet. He firmly believed that his own strength and the power in his hands were enough to suppress the entire sea. Which is not the case for me after merging with the previous Imu. As a transmigrator, I understand the importance of tools. I know my own strength is important, but making tools more useful doesn't conflict with the above, right? So, the role of this report is to first understand the specific conditions of the tools in hand. There is a lot of content in the report. Imu counted 50 or 60 pages. Even so, he could only read it one by one patiently. The whole process took more than three hours, because he needed to read and think at the same time, and he had to stop and read it again and again from time to time. To be honest, it was quite boring, but it wasn't difficult as he had previous work experience. Plus, he kept reminding himself that these were his own forces and industries, so he was very motivated. Hey! Finally, Imu finished reading the report, put it on the coffee table, and exhaled a long breath. It's not that his body is very tired. After all, the workload is insignificant given his strength. It's just that the amount of information received is a bit large. As he said before, the previous Imu did not read these things at all, so the content written in the report was basically information unknown to him. In addition, the size of the world government was far beyond what the small companies could compare to. In general, the areas that he is most concerned about have been clarified, and it has also given him a more specific understanding of world government. First of all, in terms of finance, the total revenue last year was 784.3 billion berries. The main income came from the heavenly tribute from the affiliated nations, and there were also some secondary sources, which added up to about 300 billion berries. 1. There are currently 170 affiliated nations under the world government, and according to regulations, each country must hand over 3 billion berries. 1. In other words, including the income from secondary channels, there should be 810 billion belly every year. But now only 784.3 billion berries have been received. This shows that some countries did not hand over the heavenly tribute or paid less than a part of the heavenly tribute, resulting in a shortfall of nearly 26 billion berries. According to the practice in previous years, the world government will reprimand those countries that have underpaid and require them to make up the shortfall next year, while those countries that have not paid will be given a one-year deadline. If the heavenly tribute is not handed over in the next year, the army will be dispatched to escort all citizens of the country, including the royal family and nobles, to Tequila Wolf in the East Blue, to build a bridge for life. As for countries that do not make up the deficit in the second year, the royal family will have to be replaced. This is not okay, we can't go on like this. Imu leaned on the soft sofa and thought about it. In his opinion, this issue is very important, and its importance is not much less than that of the slave trade. Three billion berries per year for each affiliated nation is nothing to big and rich countries such as Arabasta, Fishman Island, Dressrosa, and the Oikot Kingdom. Even the Drum Kingdom can benefit from the medical power of the country. The heavenly tribute can be paid in full, but for a small and poor nation like the Sorbet Kingdom, the pressure is too great and may even be fatal. What is the concept of three billion berries? The cost of a headquarters-level medium-sized warship is 300 million berries, and the cost of a future pacifist is 100 million berries. In other words, a country that joins the world government must hand over wealth equivalent to 10 medium-sized warships or 30 pacifists each year. Let's analyze last year's expenses. The military expenses of the Navy amounted to almost 100 billion berries. From the salaries, welfare, and food of the entire Navy to firearms, artillery, warships and rewards, everything came from here. But this is not fixed, sometimes it will be less. Sometimes it will be more, it depends purely on the situation at sea. As for the army, it also needs an immovable 70 billion berries every year. In addition, Cypher Paul, which is responsible for the espionage work of all sea areas, all affiliated nations, and even non-affiliated nations, 
also needs 100 billion berries, which shows how big its scale is. Then there are the wages, food and maintenance fees of the impel down, which are nearly 80 billion berries. Finally, the world government's clerks and the NIS lobby together have less than 50 billion berries. It can be seen how disdainful the previous IMU and the five elders were towards government personnel and legal personnel before. These require actual expenditures, which add up to about 600 billion berries. What about the remaining treasure worth more than 180 billion belly? Put them all into Mary Geoasa's treasury for the celestial dragons to spend and enjoy as they please. The collected heavenly tribute completely exceeds the actual demand. Imu muttered to himself. 2. If it is just to ensure the quality of life of the celestial dragons, where is the need for so much wealth? 20 billion berries every year is enough to enjoy the highest standards of things, right? Reduction, the amount of heavenly tribute must be reduced. It is best to charge flexibly in proportion according to the situation of each country. But he also knew that he couldn't rush this matter. This year's levelly was about to be held, and if everything was put on the table, it would definitely cause chaos. Let Cypher Paul first check which affiliated nations have too much money and which ones are in financial trouble, then check whether it is really unbearable for the country to pay the heavenly tribute or if it is because the country's royal family assigns the payment to the citizens. 1. For those nations that are truly impossible to pay heavenly tribute, you can do what was done with the Sorbet Kingdom and appropriately reduce the amount of heavenly tribute to ensure that the country can survive. Imu has already decided on the topic for the next levely. Then he picked up another report, which mainly contained information on the three armies. The so-called three armies, namely the navy, the army and the holy land garrison. The army is responsible for guarding the important facilities of the world government and the entire Red Earth continent. According to the current world government laws, civilians are prohibited from coming up without permission, but some people just want to come up. So, they need to be cleared out. The Holy Land Guard, as the name suggests, is mainly responsible for guarding Mary Geoasa. If the celestial dragons want to go down to Earth to play, they also need to send people to follow them. Imu is not concerned about these two troops now but there may be big moves in the future. Navy According to the report, the total strength of the Navy is now about 500,000. The naval headquarters of the Grand Line and all G departments and branches add up to about 50,000. The other four Cs have a total of 450,000, but it is not even. For example, East Blue is the quietest so there are few designated troops. 3. In fact, the affiliated nations have their own armies. The Navy only needs to be responsible for order at sea, so there are no excessive troop requirements. Their main need is warships. Until now, the Navy has a total of 70 large battleships used for the Buster Call, and a thousand medium-sized battleships, of which 50 are permanently stationed at the Navy headquarters, and the remaining 900 are scattered among various G departments and divisions and there are more than 4,000 small warships in about 200 branch bases all over the world. Still, it is not a uniform distribution. Relatively speaking, the G base of the New World definitely needs more warships. After all, they are facing the most vicious and powerful pirate force. No wonder the Five Elders and the others have been suppressing the development of the Navy. Whether it is military strength or authority, it is indeed a bit too big. Imu murmured thoughtfully. We definitely cannot use the Navy at this stage, but we do need to find ways to balance it in the future. Dash. Chapter 46, Chapter 46, Everything Belongs to the World Government. On the one hand, the Navy is too strong. In Imu's opinion, the structure of the World Government itself also has quite a few problems. Thinking of this made him a little irritated. He took the red wine from the coffee table and poured it into a crystal glass. He shook it thoughtfully, took another sip, and suddenly stood up with the wine glass in hand and slowly walked out of the treehouse. Maybe it was a psychological effect. He felt a little bored, so he went out for a walk. Walking on the silver-gray ground under his feet, 
with the stars filling the sky, and occasionally smelling the fragrance of red wine. The mates who were ready to serve nearby did not dare to look around. They lowered their heads respectfully and put their hands in front of them. As he walked, Imu followed his instinct and came to an unadorned piano made of pure silver. This piano has a name. It was given to Imu 342 years ago. It's called Moon God Piano. Imu looked at the full moon in the sky and sat casually on the piano chair. He put the bright red crystal cup aside and lightly brushed the black and white keyboard with his right finger. For the past several hundred years, while Imu lived in seclusion deep within Mary Gioase, it was not that he was doing nothing. After all, he is also a human being and needs to relieve his boredom, so he has been exposed to many things intermittently, and there are only two things that can make him intoxicated. Music and Painting Comparing the two, he is more interested in music. However, his so-called music has nothing to do with singing, but purely refers to the playing of musical instruments. The long years have allowed him to master many musical instruments, and his skill level is even a little modest to use the word expert. Among the many musical instruments, the previous Imu loved to play the piano. Sitting in front of this moon god piano, he found it difficult to restrain his fingers, so he simply raised his hands and played a series of notes. 2. As he played, he became more and more skilled, and his fingers became more and more flexible. At first, it simply played the melody that the previous Imu used to play. After a while, the melody suddenly changed, becoming more grand, powerful, and full of courage. The mates were subconsciously attracted by the scene and watched cautiously from the corner of their eyes. The shocking piano melody made him fall into deep contemplation again. Although the departmental structure of the world government seems to be in good shape, if you think about it carefully, you will find that there are many shortcomings. In terms of administration, the highest department is the Government Affairs Council, which is headed by St. Topman Warkiri. Below the Government Affairs Council are the Ministry of Administration and the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance is responsible for the issuance of berries, the management of banks, and the collection of heavenly tribute, while the Ministry of Administration has more and wider responsibilities, including construction, taxation, auditing, industry, and so on. But the problem is that, firstly, there are very few employees in each department, and secondly, the division of departments in each aspect is too simple, which gives people a very complicated and confusing feeling. Of course, the so-called few people is what he thinks, because according to his future plan, the current number of government employees is far from enough. For example, after this levely, the next World Conference will address the issue of the restructuring of heavenly tribute. If they want to charge proportional fees flexibly, it is impossible to calculate it just by the affiliated nations themselves, because it must take into account a country's population, economy, industry, and other aspects. However, the development levels of the affiliated nations in this world are uneven, and most of them are still in ancient society. Even for a big country like Arabasta, it is difficult to find many good and professional financial talents. As a result, if they wish to implement proportional charging, the world government must take on this important task and evaluate the actual situation of each affiliated nation, which requires a lot of professionals in various fields. The question arises again, where do the professionals come from? Logically speaking, they must be selected from specialized training schools, but according to the actual situation he saw, the world government did not have such an education-related department at all. There are not many schools in most of its affiliated nations. Education among the nobles is provided by tutors, while for the common people at the bottom, it can only be taught by word of mouth from the elders. In other words, if he wants a large number of professionals, he must first start by building schools. What more desperate situation! For a time, the melody under Imu's fingertips changed again, sounding more troubled and helpless negative emotions. Under such circumstances, if they want to reduce the amount of heavenly tribute and ease the pressure on poor and small countries, 
they can only opt for a blanket approach that reduces the amount for all countries, big or small, rich or poor. But if we do this, the annual income of the world government will definitely drop sharply, and even if we have the previous foundation, we will not be able to sustain it for a few years. So, the best way is to charge proportionately, with big countries and rich countries paying more, small countries and poor countries paying less. So, what can be done to solve the problem of talent shortage? Imu thought for a long time, but his fingers kept playing the melody. For a time, the entire room was filled with an extremely tense atmosphere. Correct. Suddenly, Imu's eyes, which were originally closed, suddenly opened. At the same time, an invisible aura erupted from his body, causing the half-filled glass of red wine beside him to vibrate, and the rhythm of his fingers gradually accelerated. In the countries of this world, due to the difficulty of transportation between islands, the development level of each country varies greatly. But this also means that there are not only backward countries, but also advanced countries. Some of these countries are similar to modern times, some have reached the modern level, and some are even at the level of the future. From ancient times to the future, civilizations from every period can be found on this sea. This is the most incredible thing about it. North Blue Yes, that's what Imu thought of. This is a sea area with a large number of heavy industries, cities, and hospitals in modern style. It is impossible for a place like this to not have a relatively mature education industry. Modern industry and commerce will definitely require a large number of technical, medical, and financial talents. In addition, although there are relatively few in other sea areas, there are also islands with a high degree of civilization, such as Loke Town in the East Blue, Water 7 on the Grand Line, the future country Baltimore, etc. Then the world government can completely recruit from these countries, and even recruit talents in all aspects needed to expand various departments of the government. The more Imu thought about it, the more excited he became. He discovered that he had entered a misunderstanding before. The management method that is most suitable for this world is not blindly developing and farming from scratch, but the dispatching of talents and resources. Whatever you need. You just need to find a place where it is available, because this sea has everything. It depends on whether you can find it, whether you know how to look for it, and how to make good use of it after you find it. For example, an affiliated nation has no electricity or even the ability to manufacture basic parts. It is completely an ancient country. According to common sense, it should be built from scratch. As for him, he only needs to have people send the required materials, equipment, and talents from another modern affiliated nation. Isn't this the main reason why he values the sea train? Although there are no sea trains for now, it is only possible to transfer the needed professionals from various countries by ship. It will be a little troublesome at most. If the world government does not have it, it is fine, as long as it is owned by an affiliated nation. In other words, what belongs to the world government belongs to the world government, what belongs to the affiliated nations also belongs to the world government, and what belongs to non-affiliated nations. Haha. <laughs> of course, it also belongs to the world government. 4. Imu stopped playing the piano and raised the wine glass next to him, slowly pouring the bright red wine into his mouth. Dash. Chapter 47, Chapter 47 Two ferocious cats in the south blue. Boom! A dazzling flash of lightning illuminated the sky, illuminating the gloomy sea covered in dark clouds, but in the end, it was only a momentary light. The black and blue waves kept trying to shake the towering continent of red earth, but only succeeded in being torn into pieces. Crash! A navy warship was seen covered in cannon ports. From a vantage point where the top could not be seen, the warship rushed like a wild beast along the sea current of the reverse mountain. Next, an identical brute beast would swoop down every ten minutes, until a fleet of five warships, far larger than ordinary ships, appeared brightly on the sea under the reverse mountain. It is our luck to have encountered this type of intense rainy weather. Wearing a green suit and a cape of justice, 
Dragon opened the hatch and walked to the deck. He was speechless looking at the gloomy sky, the howling wind and the heavy rain. However, because of the ability of the storm fruit, the invisible airflow surrounding him will naturally shield him from all wind and rain. After many days of sailing, they finally arrived at the South Blue. At this time, Vegapunk has not yet developed the technology for warships to pass through the comm belt, so even the navy needed to line up to ascend Reverse Mountain. Dragon was seen looking at the warships surrounding him and suddenly a flow of light green air spread from his body. Then, the five warships were blessed by the wind. Not only did an invisible film block the strong wind and heavy rain, but the speed of the ship also increased. Accelerating at a speed visible to the naked eye. He knew very well the importance of the speed at which troops are mobilized in a war. The area of the South Blue is very, very large. In addition, although the climate in the Four Seas is not as extreme and sudden as the Grand Line, it does not mean that it is very stable. But compared to the extreme and sudden climate of the Great Line, the climate of the Four Seas is relatively stable and orderly. In other words, if we are on the Grand Line, stormy weather can come and go at a moment's notice, and last for a short time but no one knows whether the next one will be hail or a tornado. The weather here in the South Blue is relatively constant and it's not a problem if a storm lasted for several days. As a result, the time it takes for the fleet to reach its destination will be greatly increased. At this time, the marines of all levels who were originally staying in the cabin gradually discovered this magical feature. Except for those who needed to stay at their posts, they stepped out of the deck to breathe fresh air with great joy. Rear Admiral Dragon, your ability is really convenient. Logia-type devil fruits are truly powerful. A Rear Admiral carrying a long red sheath sword came over and said with a smile. In this operation, Rear Admiral Irwin temporarily took over the position of adjutant. At Navy headquarters, only Vice Admirals can be assigned adjutants to follow them, and this time it is a special case. Logically speaking, as a Rear Admiral, Dragon should not be the commander-in-chief of five headquarters-level warships, but now that he is, an adjutant is needed to assist in commanding the fleet. However, Rear Admiral Irwin has no complaints. First, as the son of Garp, Dragon will definitely be treated differently. After all, there are not many marines who do not respect that naval hero. Second, Dragon's strength is convincing enough. Dragon who was not a Devil Fruit user before, had physical abilities and hacky levels that are above average for Rear Admirals. Now that he has the first level Logia-type Storm Fruit, he must have become stronger. 2. Now many Marines have compared him to Sakazuki, Borsalino, and Kuzan. It's just that Dragon himself knows his own situation. He has only eaten this Storm Fruit for about a year and the level of development is difficult to compare with the three people who have been immersed in the development of their devil fruits for more than ten years. So, his main combat power now is still focused on physical skills and hacky. Have you found out the situation of the marine base around the kingdom of Thutmosa? Dragon had no intention of joking and brought up business seriously. It has been found out that South Blue Division 289, Division 242, and Division 194 are about 50 nautical miles away from the Kingdom of Thutmosa, and are located in the northeast, southeast and west directions respectively, and we are located Reverse Mountain is located on the northwest side. Dragon nodded, but he was thinking, these four marine branches are so close to the Slave King's base camp, but why haven't they been able to discover it for so many years? What is the strength and configuration of these branches? The 289th Division is about the same as the 242nd Division, with about 3,000 troops and five small warships. The 194th Division, which is closest to the Kingdom of Thutmosa, is relatively stronger. According to intelligence, it has nearly 5,000 marines and eight small warships. Rear Admiral Irwin told the intelligence he had received, and then asked, should we inform them now to cooperate with this operation? The Kingdom of Thutmosa has nearly 30,000 troops and 10,000 slave-catching fleets scattered around the world. I don't know how many slave-catching fleets they can return. 
therefore, with the strength of these five headquarters level warships they brought, it would be too difficult to capture them. Because the regular strength of a headquarters level warship is 800 people, five ships are 4,000 people. Although because they are all from the headquarters, both in terms of military quality and personal strength, they are much stronger than the marine branch of the South Blue, but after all, they are still few people. You must know that the Kingdom of Thutmosa is a medium-sized island, which is actually much larger than the Drum Kingdom. Hence, this encirclement and suppression of the slave king Taklama and the entire strength of his men will definitely require a joint operation with the marine branch here in the South Blue. Dragon shook his head. No, we'll notify they when we only have one day left to sail. These marine branches are only 50 nautical miles away from the kingdom of Thutmosa and can be reached in two hours at most. There's no need to rush. After hearing this, Rear Admiral Irwin thought for a moment, and soon understood some of the other party's thoughts. This was obviously to prevent someone from reporting a message to the slave king. Thinking about it, Taklama has been operating in South Blue for decades. It would be ridiculous to say that its influence has not penetrated into the surrounding marine branches. After all, not many people can resist all kinds of temptations. I understand, Rear Admiral Dragon. Irwin suddenly discovered that the temporary commander he was partnering with did not seem to be the kind of person whose mind was full of muscles and who dealt with things solely with his fists. Ahem. Although some people shouldn't say this, Vice Admiral Garp gave everyone such an impression, so he thought Dragon was similar. By the way, who is the pirate with the highest bounty in South Blue now? At this time, Dragon asked again, and Rear Admiral Irwin thought for a moment. It should be the Black Cat Pirates and the White Cat Pirates. The Black Cat Pirates Captain Three-Legged Cat has a bounty of 48 million berries, and the White Cat Pirates Captain Kitten Cat, with a bounty of 43 million berries, these are the two most famous groups of pirates in the South Blue in recent years. Three-Legged Cat, Kitten Cat, what kind of funny name is this? Dragon turned his head in confusion because it didn't sound like a nickname that a vicious pirate should have. Irwin shrugged his shoulders, saying that he didn't know. Haha, <laughs> although the names are ridiculous, according to the information, both of them are users of the zoan-type cat fruit, and they are in the form of the palace cat and the lion cat, which are famous for their ferocity among cats. Since their real names are unknown, they are called by nicknames. 2. It is said that both are brothers and have a very good relationship. Since neither wants to harm the other, each one formed a pirate group and became the captains. However, the two pirate groups have always acted together. Over the years, either their strength or the number of their members has increased enough to dominate one side in the South Blue, and they are not even willing to risk entering the Grand Line. I see, there are still two Zoan-type Devil Fruit users. That's not surprising. Dragon suddenly understood and no longer dwelled on the nickname. In this way, you report the news to those three marine branches, no, to all the surrounding branches, saying that we are here to catch these two cats and ask them to help pay attention to each other's position, and wait for orders to support at any time. Dash. Chapter 48, Chapter 48, The Top Second Generation of the Navy South Blue, the 194th Marine Base stationed on Mellon Island. This island is called Mellon Island because its island shape is an oval when viewed from above. There is a narrow extension area like a melon vine at the top of the north side, and there are two melon-like areas inside. The long curved river looks like an oversized flat melon. The most important thing is that more than 50% of the island is occupied by melon fields, the remaining 30% belongs to the marine base and the remaining 20% is the residence area of the inhabitants. In fact, the residential area initially accounted for 30%. However, since the Navy brought in a new captain five years ago, the marine base has expanded even more, now occupying more than 10% of the territory. Since melon fields are their main source of income, residents are unwilling to reduce the size of their melon fields for living space. Coupled with the gradual increase in population, 
their current living environment is very congested. Even so, people can only hold back their anger. Firstly, they were unable to resist, and secondly, the existence of the marine base did prevent pirate attacks. Now everyone knows that there are more and more pirates on the sea. Residents who go to other islands to sell melons can often hear that a village or town on a certain island has been robbed by a pirate group. In recent months, when they go out to sell melons, they are escorted by warships all the way. Of course, it was not free. The marine base took the initiative to provide full protection services in exchange for 40% of the total amount of melons sold. 1. This is another choice that residents have no choice but to make. Having a naval escort is certainly a good thing. At least it ensures the safety of melon sellers, but the 40% share is too high. As a result, the living conditions of the residents of the entire Melon Island have dropped from being relatively wealthy and comfortable in the past to just enough for food and clothing. Inside the base, there are three columnar buildings, painted blue, one tall and two short. In front is a training field with no one present and in the back is a connected terminal port, with several small warehouse-style buildings. A marine with a rosy face and strong body guarded the place with a musket in his hand. There were eight small warships parked side by side in the harbor. This type of warship can generally carry 300 people, and a maximum of 500 people. At this time, in an office with a space of nearly 300 square meters on the highest floor of the main building, Captain Harrow's, with light blonde hair and an aquiline nose, stood in front of the large floor-to-ceiling window and admired the view of the entire island, occasionally glancing towards the far horizon. Calculate the time, it should be arriving soon. T.O.C., T.O.C., T.O.C. Come in. A lieutenant walked in with a wooden box. After closing the door, he looked at the back of Captain Harrow's respectfully. Base boss. The goods have arrived, and your merchandise are also there. The captain turned around suddenly and looked at the wooden box in the subordinate's hands in surprise. He quickly reached out and took it. Just when he was about to open it and take a look, he stopped and looked at the lieutenant in front of him. Go out first. Yes. After the others left the office, Captain Harrows couldn't wait to open the lid of the wooden box. The next second, a bright green devil fruit covered with spiral patterns appeared in front of him, with a card inside. Haha, it's finally here. Now my son's future is guaranteed. He excitedly took out the devil fruit and looked at it up and down, as if looking at a rare treasure. Judging from the price alone, it was indeed a treasure. He spent a full 500 million berries to buy this from King Taklama, which was considered to have wiped out half of his life savings. Fortunately, since I became the base director here, I have earned a lot of income every year. This does not refer to the money that the island residents get from selling melons. How much is it worth? The main reason was that the Kingdom of Thutmosa regularly sent a sum of money as a protection fee. What was mentioned above as merchandise referred to this. Captain Harrow's son is named Gasperdy. Because of his naturally tall, strong, and powerful body, and his recommendation in the letter, he entered the Navy headquarters three years ago and became a third-class private. But after so many years, he has only been promoted to a first-class private. Although he contacted his son and told him that he would be promoted to a cape soon, he still felt that it was too slow. In fact, he also understood that the difficulty of promotion in the Navy headquarters was definitely much greater than that in the Four Seas branches and the pirates on the Grand Line were also stronger. So, for the sake of Gasperty's future and safety, I wanted to find a powerful devil fruit from my side and send it to him. However, although he was a Navy captain, his influence was limited. Of course, the Navy headquarters actually has a way to exchange war merits for devil fruits, but not only is it time-consuming and laborious, but the quality of the fruits could not be guaranteed either. For years, the really good fruits had already been picked by others. He worried about this for many days, and finally thought of asking King Taklama, who had great magical powers and power spread all over the world for help. At first, 
I just asked with the intention of giving it a try, but after a while, the other party was actually willing to provide a devil fruit that sounded very reliable. Special Paramecia type soft candy fruit, this fruit's ability to transform the user into soft candy is analogous to the properties of a Logia fruit. Captain Haros was naturally extremely satisfied with such a surprise, but the other party was not without conditions. First, the price needs to be 500 million. It is extremely expensive. The market price of a normal paramecia type devil fruit is only about 100 million berries. However, this is a special paramecia type, so it is understandable. Second, he must ensure that he will not be transferred within the next five years. This did not matter at all, as there was no term limit in the current navy. As long as he ensures that he does not make any mistakes while in office or make great achievements that the headquarters should pay attention to, he will basically not resign or be promoted. He just needs to survive. The third is to further support the business of the Kingdom of Thutmosa, for example, help send fleets to escort when needed. In short, he agreed. With this special paramecia type soft candy fruit, that Guy Gasperty will be at least a captain in the headquarters, and it is possible that he will be promoted to Commodore. Then I will have someone to trust so that I have more influence and control in the South Blue. 2. Captain Harrows is well aware of his talent. Even if he eats the devil fruit, it will only be the same. He might as well give it to his son who has extraordinary talent. If he really gets lucky and his son becomes a Navy Admiral in the future, he will basically have nothing to worry about in South Blue. TOC, TOC, TOC. At this time, the door of the office was knocked again, which made Captain Haros, who was immersed in the vision of a better future, frown somewhat displeased, but he still put the soft candy devil fruit back into the box. Come in. What's going on? The same lieutenant came in and reported, the base commander, Rear Admiral Monkey D. Dragon of Marine Ford, led a fleet of five headquarters warships to the South Blue, saying that he wanted to capture the Black Cat Pirates and the White Cat Pirates. The Rear Admiral has asked us to investigate the location and are ready to provide support at any time. What, five warships? Captain Harrows looked puzzled. Although the bounty for the Black Cat and White Cat is quite high, and there are a lot of people, there is no need for so many warships, right? Do you want us to support them at any time? The fleet led by Dragon mentioned by the lieutenant must be a headquarters level warship. When he took his son to report to Marine Ford, he had seen with his own eyes how terrifying the specifications of those warships were. Ahem, Rear Admiral Irwin who is currently acting as Rear Admiral Dragon's adjutant, quietly told me that Rear Admiral Dragon is the son of Vice Admiral Garp, so he requires our marine branches in the South Blue to take it seriously. The lieutenant added in a stunned voice. Captain Harrows was stunned for a moment, then burst out laughing in realization. That's it, that's it. The son of a naval hero is here to gain military exploits. Then these two cats are in trouble. It would be fine if this operation goes well, but if they hurt Rear Admiral Dragon. Tisk, tisk, the consequences will be even worse, ha 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 ha. 2. After finishing speaking, he straightened his expression, looked at the lieutenant with serious eyes, and ordered, go down with the order and prepare to dispatch the warships. As soon as the order comes, we will set off immediately without delay. From his point of view, this is a rare opportunity to get in touch with Dragon, and it would be even better if he has the opportunity to mention his son's name in front of him. The son of Vice Admiral Garp, this is considered the top second generation in the naval system. Dash. Chapter 49, Chapter 49, The Treasury Hoax, World Government Strategy Mary Giosa, Peng Gia Castle, in the Room of Authority, the five elders gathered together as usual and at this time they all had a thick stack of documents in their hands. I never expected that I would one day receive an authentic handwritten letter from Imusama. This is enough to be called a treasure passed down from generation to generation. 6. As usual, because he was in charge of the Government Affairs Council, 
St. Topman Warkiri, who was sitting in the middle seat, excitedly looked at the extremely beautiful words on the document, even the commas, periods, etc. Everything was perfect in his eyes. The other four elders were also looking at the documents with a mixture of envy and admiration in their eyes, as they knew that, despite being identical copies, they did not compare to the value of a handwritten original. This was the first time that Imusama had communicated his instructions to them through documents rather than a meeting in the empty hall, and this generation of five elders was fortunate to be the recipient of this unusual attention. However, from the thickness of this document, they can also understand Imusama's thoughts. After all, if such a lot of content is discussed in the empty hall, it may not be enough for him and others to kneel down all night. By the way, Dragon's fleet has arrived in the South Blue. According to CP2 reports, he is doing an outstanding job, especially in terms of strategy. He doesn't seem like he's the son of a bastard like Garp at all. Saint Shepherd Jew Peter changed the topic. He was in a bad mood now, so he wanted to talk about other things first, and then talk about the contents of the document in his hand seriously after it was almost done so he simply told what he learned about the situation. After narrating it, the other people were also listening carefully. Dragon's planning has a touch of military genius. He has taken into account all aspects of the South Blue and has avoided alerting the Slave King ahead of time. Saint Marcus Mars added with a smile. Indeed, if it were Sakazuki, Borsalino, or Kuzan, they wouldn't necessarily have thought so carefully. St. J. Garcia Saturn agreed. At this time, St. Ethan Baron Venus Juro, had a hesitant look on his face. If this mission is carried out successfully, Dragon could rise to the rank of Vice Admiral, but I am worried about the future. He expressed with concern. As the supreme leader of the entire World Government Army, he was especially sensitive to these matters. You mean the Admiral position? This is indeed a big problem. St. Topman Warkiri also became serious, because the Admiral represents the highest combat power of the world government and must be taken seriously. Since the founding of the world government, the Navy has stipulated that there should be at most three admirals. Currently, Sakazuki, Borsalino, and Kuzan had already been appointed as successor admirals. So, what would happen to Dragon? 1. Dragon possessed talent, strength, and the ability of a devil fruit to the same extent as the three current admiral candidates, and was also the son of the navy hero, Garp. In terms of family background, he even surpassed the other three. So, it stands to reason that Dragon is fully qualified to become a navy admiral, but the quota is not enough. You can't just give him the title of admiral candidate and let him sit on the bench and wait for decades, right? After all, Dragon has no advantage in terms of age. He is 34 years old this year, while Sakazuki is 31 years old, Borsalino is 34 years old, and Kuzan is even 25 years old. If there is no accident in the future, he will have to wait. Unless Dragon, like his father, is willing to be a vice-admiral for the rest of his life, would this be too wasteful? Originally, Garp's refusal to be promoted to Admiral had already made the five elders very angry. Of course, the situation between the two is different. Garp was not promoted to Admiral because he refused, while in Dragon's case there are too many Admirals and there is no place for him. How about we promote him to Vice Admiral first? Regarding the future, we can deal with it appropriately in due course. St. Topman Warkiri said helplessly, and St. Ethan Baron Venus Juro beside him could only nod. As long as Dragon successfully completes his mission to eliminate the Slave King before this year's levelly, we will have already advanced half of our objectives. St. J. Garcia Saturn changed the topic again. Because they really have no say in the matter of the rank of Admiral, and do not dare to change it without authorization. After all, these rules were established by Imusama back then, so as long as Imusama does not take the initiative to request the reform, they will never mention it. Whether it is the five elders of this generation or the previous five elders, they all know how much Imusama doesn't like chaos and change. 
This is also the main reason why the world government system has not changed in 800 years and therefore they strive to ensure the stability of the entire world situation. Although the entire world government is trying to change now because of the big prophecy, no one knows what level of change Imusama can tolerate. Therefore, they had reached a tacit agreement to follow Imusama's instructions without questioning them. It is a wise decision by Imusama to eliminate the slave king before the levelly took place. This will avoid a series of unforeseen problems. However, we face a major problem. What to do with the more than 100,000 slaves in Mary Gosa? St. Marcus Mars asked. 1. In the resplendent and opulent Mary Gosa, there was maintained a large population of slaves that had been acquired by the celestial dragons. These slaves were considered high quality or exceptional products. Women are beautiful and cute, men are strong, capable, or possess some special ability, there are also all kinds of subhuman races. After all, they are all slaves who have caught the attention of the celestial dragons and must have something special for the celestial dragons to be willing to bring them back to the holy land. What else can we do, just kill them all? Saint Ethan Baron Venus Juro stroked the scabbard of the Shode Kaiditsu and replied expressionlessly, then continued. If we let them go, their hatred towards the celestial dragons will definitely have a certain negative impact, and most of them will even end up as pirates. The number of pirates is already increasing. His words made the other four people fall silent. After a moment, Saint Topman Warkiri shook his head. After thinking about it, he felt that it was not appropriate to do so. Although it is easy to kill them all, the consequences are not small. Improving people's trust in the world government, restoring a positive image, and reducing the rise of pirates are one of Imusama's goals for this year's levelly. If someone discovers it and then spreads it, the consequences would be disastrous. Then what do we do? asked Saint. Shepherd Jew Peter. Free one group and restrict the rest. The same as we did before with the fishmen, we let Tsuru use his ability to wash away the hatred of a group of slaves. We then escort them back to their hometown, while broadcasting it live to the world, stating that Mary Gosa has freed all the slaves, and the rest will be kept close to Mary Gosa for the time being. We will lock them up and deal with them slowly, the continent of Red Earth is huge and there is a lot of space. St. Topman Warkiri's proposal made the other four eyes light up, and they all felt that this was indeed a good idea. As long as they release more than 10,000 people and control them on camera, the scene will be enough to deceive the people of the world. At this time, St. Shepherd Jew Peter was inspiration and said with a smile, Can this method be modified and used to solve the rumors of the big treasure first? Aren't there some people who were tempted by Roger's treasure to become pirates? Then we will organize a live broadcast to escort the big treasure back to Mary Gosa, announcing that we have found the One Piece. Although it will not completely eradicate the appearance of new pirates, it will undoubtedly have a great impact. 5. Saint Jagarsha Saturn smiled. It's indeed a good idea. Isn't One Piece just a treasure? Let's let the people of the world see with their own eyes what a real big treasure is. Once they have seen it and satisfied their curiosity, everything should calm down. In terms of wealth, is there anyone on this planet who can compare with the world government? Dash. Chapter 50, Chapter 50, Dragon Sharpens His Skills in Battle The two large seagoing ships had four decks, two of which were gun cabins. They were one black and one white. They carried almost identical skull and crossbones flags except for the cat ear color. They faced the cannonballs that were blasting through the sky, between the high-rising water pillars, fleeing desperately. Behind them, a dozen warships were seen chasing after them, launching countless cannon shots towards them. Damn it, why? Why did these navies suddenly turn into mad dogs, and they just want to bite us? On the white ship, the kitten cat glared angrily at the fleet in the distance and cursed loudly. At this moment, the Den Den Mushy sitting on his palm opened his mouth. Calm down, white cat, I guess it's the nobles from various countries in the South Blue who are behind this. After all, 
we have plundered many noble vessels in recent years, you are no stranger to that, Miao. In addition, three months ago, we broke into the palace of the Kingdom of Renner and emptied the treasure house. It seems that this incident completely angered the nobles, so they spent a lot of money to let these navy come to catch us. On the other black boat, apart from being dressed in black, the three-legged cat who looked almost the same as another kitten cat made a rather calm guess. However, he also felt something strange in his heart. Are the nobles of these countries really so powerful? You know, since they were discovered by two warships yesterday, they seem to have been targeted. No matter where they go, groups of warships will always appear to chase them. At the most outrageous time, there are warships encircling and suppressing them from almost three directions. And there is another strange thing. These warships always give him a feeling of deliberately keeping a distance. What on earth does the Navy want to do? The Black Cat ignored the roar of artillery fire around it and scanned the nearby sea area to think. Hey, you don't care what they want to do, I'm going crazy now, find a target and hit him first, maybe I'll scare them, so they won't chase me anymore, meow. The White Cat shouted angrily across the Den Den Mushy. At the same time his body undergoes a remarkable metamorphosis. In the blink of an eye, human features begin to merge with those of the ferocious lion. His eyes take on an intense light yellow tone and his pupils narrow. The once human hands are affected as the nails transform into sharp, deadly claws on all ten fingers and a pair of pointed ears rise on top of the head, granting keen hearing and a more feline appearance. There it is. Chief White Cat's Lion Cat form thanks to his devil fruit, Cat Cat. The crew members nearby, dressed in white fur coats and wearing white cat ears on their heads, were all shouting excitedly. For these South Blue Pirates who haven't seen much of the world, the devil fruit ability is an extraordinary ability that represents the highest power. No, meow. But the Black Cat stopped him resolutely. There are too many warships. Our two ships are powerful enough to fight against a navy with up to three warships at the same time. But now there are more than twenty warships around. Do you want to live in prison with me? If you say you are willing, then I will be happy to go in with you, meow. Hearing this, the white cat hesitated, and the murderous intent in his eyes gradually faded. Although he was impulsive and lively, he was not an idiot and he didn't want to harm the other party because of himself. Therefore, he had to suppress his anger. Then what should I do, meow? The black cat said, keep running away. Judging from the direction, I very much doubt that these navy want to force us into the grand line, meow. These words were originally spoken out of his mouth, but after he thought about them carefully, he felt they made more sense, which made his eyes light up. Yes that should be the case. The navy in the South Blue accepted the commission from the nobles, but they were concerned about the strength of the two of us and did not want to pay excessive casualties, so they wanted us to enter the Grand Line. This can be considered as a replacement. The nobles' purpose is to eliminate disasters, meow. So that's it, meow. The white cat also felt that the black cat's guess was right and asked, then we just go along with their wishes. The black cat sighed with resignation. Then what else can we do? It seems that our actions over the years have completely angered the nobles of the South Blue. There is no place for us here anymore. The white cat laughed coldly. Humph, it's just the grand line. Come on brother, anywhere we can make our way together. And by the way, let's see how rich the nobles in the grand line are, meow. Meanwhile. Five huge warships, several times larger than the South Blue's warships, advanced in a triangular formation, sailing unhindered through the waves. In these South Blue waters, they occupy the top of the food chain. Rear Admiral Dragon, there is news from the 175th Division of the South Blue. The Black Cat Pirates and the White Cat Pirates are currently being rounded up by them and coming towards us, ten nautical miles away. A captain ran over and reported loudly. I understand, pass the order and prepare to fight. Dragon nodded expressionlessly, 
and Rear Admiral Irwin burst out laughing. These marine branches in the South Blue are really enthusiastic. Actually, Dragon never expected that things would develop like this. Originally, he planned to fake capture the Black Cat and White Cat pirates to make a short detour before heading to the territory of the Kingdom of Thutmosa. Then, he notified the three nearby marine branches to cooperate, intending to catch the pirates by surprise. But who knew that all the branches in South Blue were doing their best to bring these two groups of pirates in front of Dragon's fleet? Furthermore, they were prepared to supply immediate support if the situation on their side became critical. Which means that even if Dragon is a useless marine, they will still find a way to make him win this military feat handily. It was evident how much these South Blue Marine branches didn't know about Dragon's strength, which had Erwin laughing out loud for the past few days. In that case, let's accept them on the road. Two pirates with Zoan-type devil fruits with a bounty of nearly 50 million are indeed a big threat in this South Blue. We can be considered to be eliminating a danger to the people. Pirates with bounties under 50 million are usually from the four seas and are not too threatening. We should be able to handle them with some commanders. Rear Admiral Irwin shrugged his shoulders indifferently. No, I will personally take charge and end the fighting quickly, then we will advance towards the Kingdom of Thutmosa for a surprise attack. As always, Dragon believed that speed is essential in war. The encirclement was only to prepare the battlefield, speed in the surprise attack was the key. Irwin volunteered. If that is the case, as a senior officer, you should not intervene directly. I am willing to do so and ensure a quick victory. He is also the adjutant this time, so he feels that he should express something at this time, and it is also a good thing to have a good relationship with Dragon. Thank you, but I want to do it myself and try my devil fruit ability. Dragon politely declined. Okay then Rear Admiral Irwin didn't care. He felt that his chief officer wanted to make a splash in front of himself and all the navy. After all, it is a storm fruit of the Logia type, so it does have the capital to show off, and he also really wants to see the battle scene of the Logia type. But in fact, Dragon didn't think about these messy things. He just became an ability user not long ago, and he concealed the fact of his ability in order to rebel, and he had very few opportunities to use his ability to fight. Therefore, there are indeed some shortcomings in development, and he just had a fight with CP0 before. So, he was going to take this opportunity to come up with some useful tricks on the two cats. After all, the slave king he would face later was very powerful, at least master the use of Haki. According to the intelligence description, he has been training the use of Haki for over ten years, in addition to a longer period of time training his Paramecia-type Devil Fruit abilities. In other words, it was a preparation before the actual battle. Dash. Chapter 51, Chapter 51, The Fierce Encounter of the Black and White Cats with the Dragon 1. Black Cat, is there something wrong with these navy? Wythe Cat stood at the stern of the ship and looked at the naval fleet that was still chasing after him. He asked a question to the Den Den Mushi in his hand, since he only had a feeling and could not clearly express what he felt. At this time, he needs Black Cat who is a little smarter than him to answer his questions. It's the cannon fire, meow. Sure enough, the Black Cat did not disappoint him this time. Those navies are gradually reducing the frequency of artillery fire, meow. As the Black Cat said this, he was also deep in thought. On the other hand, the Wythe Cat showed a smile and said, Could it be that they are running out of ammunition? Meow. The former immediately shook his head and rejected this possibility. This is impossible. Everyone knows that the Navy in the South Blue ranks second among the four seas in terms of wealth. To them, artillery shells are no different from the bullets in our eyes. At that moment, when the last roar exploded in the sea not far away, the entire world suddenly seemed to fall silent and the sound of waves crashing on the deck was the only thing that could be heard. Black Cat, they ceased fire, meow. The White Cat shouted in surprise. Due to the short distance between the two ships and the stoppage of the artillery, the Black Cat could hear it without needing the Den Den Mushy. 
It's strange, it's so strange. We are obviously still a long way away from Reverse Mountain, and these navy still have no intention of catching up with them. The latter looked at the surrounding sea and found that he and others were once again surrounded by three parties, but the warships were just following quietly. At this moment, a burst of rapid footsteps quickly approached from behind him. When he turned to look, he saw a crew member running towards him with a panicked expression, spreading his arms to the sides and shouting, Captain! There are warships ahead! And they are huge, extraordinarily huge! At the same time, the same situation was happening on the white ship side. The next moment, the black cat and the white cat turned into vague afterimages at an extremely alarming speed and rushed from the stern to the bow. They also saw five incredibly large and terrifying warships approaching from the front. What the hell are those things, meow? The white cat opened his mouth and murmured to himself in disbelief. Because he is a cat cat devil fruit user, his visual ability is very strong, so he can see more clearly than ordinary people. Those warships in the front are visually several times larger than those of the South Blue warships in the back, especially the caliber of the triple turrets above are very scary. If my guess is correct, it should be the legendary warship of the Navy headquarters, meow. The black cat answered with a pale face. Navy headquarters. Yes. I really didn't expect that the South Blue Nobles would be so capable as to invite the Navy headquarters to catch us. The Black Cat was in a complicated mood at this moment. He feels both desperate and inexplicably flattered. After all, looking at all pirate groups in the South Blue, no one has attracted the attention of the Navy headquarters. From this point of view, they are quite powerful. Hey, what are you thinking about at this time, Meow? Opposite, Dragon on the warship received a question from the lower level marines about whether to fire cannons. His answer was of course no. With the cannons of these headquarters level warships, as long as one shot hits, the other side's ship will basically stop. Then how to practice? Rear Admiral Irwin, I'll leave this to you. You can notify the warships of the South Blues marine branches to return. By the way, I would like to express my gratitude for your hard work. No problem, I look forward to your performance. Rear Admiral Irwin smiled gently. Performance. Dragon glanced at the other party in confusion, but at this moment, the familiar sound of cannons sounded again, followed by two sharp sounds of breaking through the air. The two men looked up and saw two red hot shells approaching at high speed. Hey. I didn't expect that the pirates in the South Blue are quite brave and actually rushed towards us. Rear Admiral Irwin raised his brows and said with some surprise. At the same time, Dragon transformed into a light green whirlwind and soared into the sky. The raging wind blew the justice coat on Rear Admiral Irwin to the ground. Is this the ability of the Logia type storm fruit? It's a bit cool Irwin looked at the flying green whirlwind with envy in his eyes. On the ship of the Black Cat Pirates, the Den Den Mushy in the hands of the captain showed a fierce expression. Don't worry about the headquarters and branches. Since there is no way to retreat, the only way to survive is to fight. After all, the opponent is only three warships. Even if they are bigger, they will only have several times more people to survive. Fight them. Meow. Hearing the words of Wythe Cat, Black Cat had to admit that the other party was more courageous than him in this situation, and he was indeed able to do so. At this moment, he has fully realized the intention of the South Blue Navy. They didn't want to push them towards Reverse Mountain, they wanted to take them in front of the Navy headquarters fleet. You are right, sometimes you have to fight hard when you should fight hard, and now is such a time, meow. After saying that, the body of Black Cat changed dramatically at a speed visible to the naked eye. His size was rapidly expanding, his pores grew thick white yellow hair, the tips of his ears were rounded and blunt, and his pupils turned light green. This is the hybrid form of the Zoan-type palace cat fruit. Get ready to fight! Meow! Black Cat shouted at the surrounding crew members, his voice becoming rougher than before. Meow! 
nearly 300 crew members of the Black Cat Pirates and the White Cat Pirates roared and meowed in unison, not only to cheer for the upcoming battle, but also to express their trust in the strength of the two captains. These are two Devil Fruit Power users, what are you afraid of? However, in the next instant, some people noticed that the projectiles they had fired were returning in the opposite direction. The two dark projectiles became larger and larger in the sky. Be careful. The terrifying scream alerted all the pirates on both ships. Whoosh, whoosh. Fortunately, the captain they had always believed in did not let them down. They watched as a white and a black figure moved at high speed, jumping on the tall masts and cutting the air with sharp claws. The two shells returning to their ships split into three pieces and exploded in the air in the blink of an eye. Wow! This impressive display thrilled the pirates on both ships. They always reacted that way whenever they saw their captains ripping apart the shells. However, Black Cat and White Cat did not relax at all, but instead became more vigilant and nervous. Because they knew very well that it was impossible for the cannonballs to fly back on their own, so for something so contrary to common sense, as a Devil Fruit user, the first thing they could think of was the ability of the Devil Fruit. Coupled with the fact that as an Zoan type user, he is more sensitive in terms of sixth sense, the unprecedented strong sense of crisis in his heart is even more shocking. Whoosh! Suddenly, a strong wind arose on the deck of the black ship, throwing more than a dozen pirates into the air. In that clear space, a tall navy officer appeared. Dash. Chapter 52, Chapter 52, The Wind Dragon's Chant Swallows Two Cats Although Dragon's appearance was shocking enough, the Black Cat Pirates on the ship were all elites from the South Blue and had quite a lot of combat experience. After a brief moment of surprise, the weapons were directed towards him, and without hesitation, they pulled the trigger of their weapons. Bang! The first loud gunshot directly kicked off the battle. More gunshots rang out from all directions, and dense bullets poured out like heavy rain. Seeing this, Dragon frowned slightly and stopped his subconscious instinct to use his hacky. For him, if he uses hacky or too strong physical skills, this battle will lose its meaning. He must ensure that he only uses the ability of the storm fruit to deal with them. In an instant, the bullets closed in, but a stream of green wind appeared around Dragon, creating a whirlwind that stopped the bullets and let them fall limply to the ground. 1. It's indeed a devil fruit ability, but it looks very different from ours, meow. The white cat who had jumped from the white ship to the black ship without anyone noticing, crouched on the mast of the black ship and watched Dragon from above. He and black cat came from the lowest level of the south blue, so they did not receive any good education. They were only taught how to write for three years by two kind old men, and had no chance to learn about devil fruits. Therefore, they had no idea about devil fruits. Understanding is limited to knowing that it is the secret treasure of the sea. Having not seen any other devil fruit users in the South Blue until now, they mistakenly believed that all the users had different animal forms, like the two of them. It seems like he can turn into wind and control the wind. He sure deflected those bullets with the wind, look closely, meow. The black cat warned as he watched the battle seriously. At the same time, the black cat pirates on the deck saw that the musket fire was useless. The surrounding pirates holding steel knives, daggers and long swords all showed the most ferocious expressions and attacked him. Sure enough, this time, the suddenly appeared marine man could no longer stand still and ignore the attack. Instead, he followed the green wind and moved among the crowd with extremely ethereal movements, dodging sword slashes and sword thrusts from all angles. Occasionally, some people felt their weapons make contact, but they only hit a semi-transparent layer of wind. On the other hand, Dragon resisted the urge to fight back, coping with the siege of the pirates while feeling the power of the wind. At this time, if he was seen by Rear Admiral Irwin, he might think that Dragon was using the Kanbuncho Kohaki, but this was just sensing the flow of air, in addition to semi-transforming his body into the wind element from time to time. Dragon felt that since he was already a Logia-type ability user, 
he had to get used to using the elemental characteristics as soon as possible. The move he was using right now was called Wind Dragon Shelter. The Wind Blessing on the body can not only improve agility and speed, but also provide protection and airflow perception. It seems to be a quite comprehensive auxiliary skill, but it's not just that either. Wind Dragon The next moment, the green wind that had been quietly flowing around Dragon suddenly became turbulent. More wind force surged out to form a spiraling wind dragon, which swept nearly a hundred pirates on the deck high into the sky. Ah! What was even more astonishing was that the pirates covered by the gale began to show multiple bloody cuts, as if they were being torn apart by thousands of knives. They let out piercing cries of pain and instinctively tried to protect themselves. Oh my god, what the hell is this? The white cat appeared next to the black cat in the blink of an eye staring in amazement at the wind dragon that was writhing like a whirlwind, with dragon's figure flickering in the center of the whirlwind. As soon as the wind dragon appeared, his animal instinct frantically warned the white cat. Fortunately, he obeyed the instinct and jumped down as fast as possible. Otherwise, he would probably be cut by the wind now. The black cat did not respond to the white cat because he didn't know what to say. Dragon's ability was so amazing that he didn't even know how to deal with it. Ten seconds later, as the wind dissipated, the black cat pirates, covered in bruises and bloody mouths, fell like dumplings one after another. Some of the unlucky ones fell directly into the ocean. The most surprising thing was that the deck had a big hole where Dragon was, but he didn't fall through it. Instead, he floated in the air with a smaller wind dragon around him. What makes the black cat and the white cat feel most nervous is that dragon's eyes are focused on them, which makes the two of them assume a feline-like alert posture. But the latter has no killing intention towards these two cats. He had already learned about their information on the way here. For pirates like this who only targeted nobles and did not do any harm to civilians and did not kill many, they still had to be caught, but there was no need to kill them. However, his staring at them finally led the black cat and white cat to take action. Without any verbal communication or exchange of glances. Almost at the same time, they rushed towards Dragon with the intention of taking the lead. The ability users in Lion Cat form and Palace Cat form, one on the left and one on the right, were so fast that their bodies were blurred. They approached Dragon in an instant. With feline claws capable of cutting iron, they attacked ferociously one from above and one from below, working in perfect synchronicity. Black cat's fierce claws, meow. White cat's fierce claws, meow. Meanwhile, dragon's small wind dragon roared and rose, quickly transforming into a wind dragon more than three meters high and about ten meters long. It completely ignored the black cat's attacks and instead threw it back, with the same speed with which it had come, then, with a flick of its tail it pushed the white cat back to the other side. Bang! Bang! The two of them hit the side of the ship heavily one after another. They both spat out a mouthful of blood and looked in horror at Dragon who slowly floated in front of them and the wind dragon that was swimming in midair and staring at them. In fact, as an Zoan type ability user, although the wind dragon's attack is heavy enough, it will not lose its combat ability. However, the huge gap between the two sides is disappointing. Captain! Captain! At this moment, the crew members of the white ship of the white cat pirates rushed to the deck of the black cat ship, climbing the ropes with hooks and wielding their weapons. They also saw the strength displayed by Dragon, but the two captains treated them well. Most of them had been oppressed and bullied by the nobles before. It was the captains who showed up and severely punished the nobles and brought them with them. Come out to the sea without worrying about food and clothing and be free. So, at this moment, even those black cat pirates who were cut by the tornado, as long as they had the strength to stand up, they all braved the pain and rushed towards Dragon with all their strength. Captains, escape on the white ship. Yes, run. We'll stop him. The pirates of the black cat and white cat groups believe that with the strength of the two captains, they will be able to escape successfully. They are devil fruit users. You. You. 
The black cat and the white cat had red eyes, but they did not choose to leave on their own. Instead, they stood up and roared towards Dragon with their crew members. We will die together, meow. Dragon was also a little surprised when he saw this scene. He had encountered many pirate groups before, but he had never seen such a united pirate group, even willing to die for the captain. He became curious about these pirates. Forget it, I'll imprison them first. Dragon felt that time had almost passed. The next moment, the wind dragon expanded violently, then exploded with a bang, turning into a raging green wind that swept everything around it, swallowing up all the pirates and the two cats. The black and white ships were destroyed in the wind. Roar! The faint roar of the wind dragon echoed throughout the sea. Chapter 53 Chapter 53 Imu opens the dimensional gate for the first time 1. Holy Land, Mary G.O.S.A. After sending the World Government Restructuring Plan to the Five Elders, Imu relaxed greatly. What he wrote was not very detailed, he simply expressed his ideas in a general way, consulting many perceptions and experiences from his previous life. However, during implementation, the collaboration of the Five Elders and elites from various regions and sectors such as administration and finance would be required for joint research and discussions. This is bound to be a lengthy and extremely tedious process. But fortunately, there are four years until the next levely, so they have plenty of time to prepare. After being busy and now being idle Imu felt bored. Even though the previous Imu had spent hundreds of years like this, but he couldn't follow that lifestyle. Imu was lying on the couch, opening his star map nonchalantly. Suddenly, an astonishing view of the vast universe spread out before him. This is one of his daily pleasures. He always feels that this real-time updated star map is something that he never tires of viewing. It is extremely shocking. Especially when viewed from an overhead perspective, it can satisfy his desire for control and stimulate his ambition for the sea of stars. 1. In other words, in the entire starfish, he is the only one who knows exactly what the shape of the universe is, while others can only guess. Through consciousness control, Imu zoomed in on the area where the starfish was located. After more than ten times of zooming in, a blue planet surrounded by six large and two small satellites and wearing a red ribbon finally appeared. This is the One Piece world he lives in, called Starfish. What's interesting is that among the eight satellites, the smallest one is also a satellite of another satellite. The most incredible thing to him is that when looking up at the starry sky from inside the starfish, only the moon can be seen, but other satellites cannot be seen at all. Even if some of these satellites are larger than the moon. It seemed that some satellites did not reflect or receive sunlight. Fortunately, Imu wasn't an astronomer and didn't worry too much about this. Instead, he slightly reduced the magnification of the star map enough to have a complete view of the star system where the starfish is located. Is there a sun with a total of six planets including starfish, among which starfish seems to be the largest, and only starfish has satellites? Imu looked at every detail of the star system with great interest. Speaking of which, this starfish is indeed big enough. Just in the four sea areas of east, west, north, and south, each one looks similar to the Pacific Ocean in my previous life. Because he stayed alone for a long time, he unconsciously developed a habit of talking to himself. This was also the reason why he decided to go out for a walk. If he continued to stay like this, he would go crazy. By the way, I remember that Enel in the original book also encountered the so-called space pirates on the moon, so there may be a lot of aliens active around here. Although judging from the content of the One Piece series, there will be no scenes of alien invasion in the next 20 years, but who can guarantee that there will not be any in the future? Maybe because of my arrival, some spaceships will come down one day. When people are idle, the mind begins to wander. Imu suddenly realized that she was not only facing internal conflicts within the starfish, but also external threats from space. This made the feeling of relaxation from his begin to disappear. And also, in the introduction of this star map, it does not guarantee the absence of civilizations. 
Therefore, from another perspective, there could be planets with civilizations, the dimensional gates simply open a transportation channel under my control. So, what would be the civilization on these planets? He suddenly thought of a conjecture that made him a little scared and nervous. Hence, he can make bold guesses based on the characteristics of this golden finger. Since the world of One Piece exists, is it possible that the world of other fictions also exists? Yes, isn't this the most common setting? Imu stood up suddenly because he couldn't sit still anymore. He quickly walked out of the treehouse and looked up at the stars in the sky. At this moment, these beautiful stars gradually became scary in his eyes. 1. If his assumption is correct, then this star map is more complicated than he thought. The Tsutsuki clan who like to plant god trees on alien planets to swallow all life force and harvest chakra fruits. This is the first existence he thinks of. 1. Then there were the Scions, a race specialized in conquering, plundering and massacring other planets, then selling them to aliens from another part of the universe. Isn't this the typical style of space pirates? 3. In other words, if I sort out the internal conflicts of starfish and continue to stay at home, one day in the future, I am very likely to see a few white spherical spaceships falling down. At this moment, Imu was frightened by his own guess. Although his strength was the strongest in this world, he did not know what level he was at among the worlds of the various works of fiction that existed in his previous life. He took a deep breath and spoke to himself. No, I have to calm down. These are just my conjectures. The actual facts have yet to be determined. How to confirm then? Imu looked at the indication that said you can open two small dimensional doors at random. What if he could open one on a civilized planet to take a look? Under the eyes of several nearby maids, he returned to the treehouse again, then continued into the back room and closed the door. Standing in front of the bed, Imu touched his chin and continued thinking. What happens after the dimensional gate is opened? According to normal development, you will probably have to choose between two styles. One is to venture into an unknown world alone, and then return to starfish with the harvest. The second is to jointly develop in the form of an organization. First send in some professional intelligence personnel, and after they bring back detailed investigation reports, the large force will then advance layer by layer and at the same time cooperate or fight with the top leaders of the other world. Both options have their own pros and cons. The first option had risks and the need to keep the existence of the Stargate a secret. It was unclear whether it was good or bad, and the use of those worlds would surely be limited. However, he would resolve his boredom and inactivity that was affecting him. The second option is just the opposite, but it is destined to make the existence of the dimensional gate public. The first people who need to be informed are definitely the five elders. Hey, I can open a dimensional gate and then decide whether to enter or not. Imu smiled excitedly, but his cold face remained for so long that even his smile became a little cold, but he stopped again just when he was about to make a move. No, what if there was some great god on the opposite side, and he discovered it the moment he opened the dimensional gate? Imu was caught in indecision again, but in the end, curiosity overcame caution. Carefully, he opened the first dimensional gate at random and placed it five meters in front of him. Buzz! The next moment, a beam of light suddenly appeared followed by a rotating star cluster. The star cluster quickly spread out, forming a long square door three meters high and two meters wide. What is this? At this moment, the dots of starlight on the surface of the long square door gradually dissipated into a picture of green mountains and blue sky, as if telling him that as long as he passed through this door, he could enter another world. So that's what happened. It's really a portal, but the wind and smell can't seem to come through. Imu looked at the world inside the door and murmured in a low voice. At the same time, a point within the star map is automatically highlighted with a golden light. Four. Dash. Chapter 54, Chapter 54, World Government Restructuring Plan Pangaea Castle The five elders who were in the Room of Authority fell into a collective silence. 
This was due to the overwhelming amount of information they were assimilating from the World Government Restructuring Plan, a document that was not only extensive but also caused considerable surprise at the magnitude of the proposed changes. After nearly 30 minutes of silence, St. Topman Warkuri, took the lead and said, I think you have all given enough thought. Let me begin. It's okay, after all, Imusama's restructuring plan is mainly aimed at your Government Affairs Council A&D. St. Marcus Mars glanced at St. J. Garcia Saturn beside him. And also, to my Court of Justice, right? The last one showed an obvious smile. In this regard, the former just nodded. According to Imusama's plan, the size and power of the Court of Justice will greatly increase in the future. In that case, let me talk about the affairs of the Government Affairs Council. St. Topman Warkuri took over the conversation. According to this plan, the first step is to integrate outstanding administrative and financial talents from all over the world into the world government, and at the same time vigorously support the expansion of relevant professional schools, and then let these people study the specific matters of the restructuring of the Government Affairs Council. The document specifically mentions several heavy industrial countries in the North Blue. This matter requires your cipher Paul to investigate. St. Shepherd Jew Peter nodded and said, No problem, I will make sure CP4 pays due attention. Good. St. Topman Warkuri continued. I think Imusama's restructuring request this time is more like refinement and expansion. Before, there was only one administrative department under the Government Affairs Council, and then the administrative department assigned tasks to groups in various fields. Now, these groups have become ministerial-level departments. Although they are still directly under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Administration, they are already formal departments, and there are also the Department of Religion, the Department of Health, and the Department of Academic Affairs. The responsibility of the religious secretary is to manage and supervise all religious organizations. In the future, those large and small religions will be standardized. The Department of Health is responsible for all matters related to medical treatment, drugs and diseases in the world, including medical schools under construction. All hospitals, pharmacies and medical personnel must be controlled. Speaking of the last department, he hesitated a bit but then continued after a brief pause. It will be responsible for all educational institutions, support and establish various schools, and supervise and support the establishment of schools in the affiliated nations to ensure that all citizens receive basic education in literature and mathematics. With each statement, St. Topman Warkuri Saint could anticipate the need for a large number of personnel and considerable financial investment. To be honest, he was confused. Why should the world government do such laborious and expensive things? But he didn't dare question it. However, he did not feel any aversion to it either, since, if this restructuring was carried out according to Mr. Imu's plan, the size of the Government Affairs Council would multiply several times, which would be equivalent to a significant increase in its power. Not to mention other things, the religious department would definitely become huge in the future given the large number of people in the world who practice religion. Hey, it's not easy. Your Government Affairs Council needs too many people. St. Marcus Mars sighed, although in his heart he couldn't help but feel envy. Although the restructuring plan also mentioned the scientific forces he supervised and the departments in charge of history, compared to the Government Affairs Council and the Court of Justice, it felt like they were minor problems. In fact, in the current science team, although Dr. Vegapunk has joined, there are really no mature works that are too eye-catching, so the sense of existence is very weak. There is also something else. I have calculated it. According to the new structure after restructuring, there are a total of 12 departments under the Ministry of Administration. We will need a lot of office space for so many people. St. J. Garcia Saturn also joined the conversation. St. Topman Warkuri agrees with this point. They definitely couldn't place all those people in Mary G.O.S.A. This is the holy land of the world after all. What will happen if it becomes too chaotic? In the past, there were not many officials in the world government, 
so it was acceptable, but now it is no longer possible. At this moment, Saint Shepherd Jew Peter suddenly spoke. Isn't it written in this document? We will establish the new headquarters of the world government on the Red Earth continent, and Mary Gosa will only serve as a place of residence for the celestial dragons and to celebrate the levelly in the future. He should be the most relaxed person now, because this restructuring did not mention Cypher Paul at all. To be honest, this is both a bit of a relief and a bit disappointing. At the same time, Saint Topman Warkuri, Saint Marcus Mars, and Saint J. Garcia Saturn quickly checked the document again after these words were spoken, and sure enough they found the content mentioned by Saint Shepherd Jew Peter. The document was quite large, and they were a little overwhelmed. But for 800 years, there has been only one city in the Red Earth continent, Mary Gosa. Isn't that, right? Saint Marcus Mars hesitated. He is responsible for historical matters, so he is most sensitive and pays attention to this aspect. He feels that this violates the rules passed down from generation to generation. After this new world government headquarters was built, shouldn't there be more than a hundred thousand people? This is already a city. Since this is Imasama's wish, I don't think there is any need to discuss it. To put it bluntly, what guarantees the status and privileges of us celestial dragons is not these superficial rules, but absolute combat power and military power. Saint Ethan Baron Venus Juro, who had remained silent, spoke, scanning the four people present with no expression on his face. This restructuring plan, in my opinion, not only makes the size of the world government larger, but also the scope of power. This means we become stronger. The influence of the government council is further strengthened. Using the money that can never be spent and the false name of the only city in the Red Earth continent in exchange for substantial power and strength, is there any more profitable transaction than this? His words made Saint Marcus Mars fall silent, and the other three nodded in agreement, especially Saint Topman Warkuri, who smiled, showing that he was in a very good mood. That's it. When Cypher Paul's intelligence collection is completed, we will start recruiting talents from various countries, and at the same time, let the administrative department start looking for a place to build the world government headquarters. In any case, four years are more than enough time no matter what you do. Next comes my court of justice. I did not expect Mr. Imu to value the judicial field so much. St. J. Garcia Saturn tapped his cane happily. The restructuring of the Supreme Court is not major. It is just that the names of some departments have been changed. The focus is on the Ministry of Justice. We are required to recruit legal talents from various countries to improve the outdated legal provisions that have been out of date for hundreds of years. We have also transferred the Bounty Department that originally belonged to the Navy. This reward department is mainly responsible for discussing, deliberation, deciding the amount of rewards for prisoners and issuing official reward lists. The bald old man in charge of the military had no objection to this, because he only valued the combat effectiveness of the army, and issuing bounties was unnecessary. At this time, Saint Shepherd Jew Peter stepped in and said with a smile, I think it is a big deal for Imusama to transfer Impel down to the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Justice, but you have to pay for the wages and maintenance costs of Impel down. Ha ha ha, our court still has some money. Saint J. Garcia Saturn was happy, and then glanced at Saint Ethan Baron Venus Juro who was sitting opposite. Because Impel Down has always been a department directly under the Navy. But Saint Ethan Baron Venus Juro nodded in support and said, I think it's very good. Impel Down was originally used to detain prisoners. In the future, it will be the responsibility of the Court of Justice to supervise the prisoners. It's reasonable. After all, he still despises the jailers in Impel Down, and this also saves him from having to allocate money from the Navy military expenditure every year. It is really that the combat power of Impel Down cannot be used. Although it is also an armed force, it is the army used for war is two different things, but he also noticed some of Imusama's intentions, which was to deliberately reduce the scope of the Navy's power. Finally, there is the newly established Ministry of Police, 
which is at the same level as the Supreme Court and the Ministry of Justice. I find it very interesting. St. Topman Warkiri smiled at St. Jagarsha Saturn. Dash. Chapter 55, Chapter 55, Haro's Quick Decision South Blue, Mellon Island, base of the 194th Marine Base The lieutenant ignored the salutes from the Marines on the way, hurriedly pushed open the door without knocking, and shouted to Captain Haro's who was sitting behind the desk and just raised his head. Base Commander, Rear Admiral Dragon sent an order requiring us to arrive at the waters of Thutmosa Kingdom within two hours to cooperate with the arrest operation. 1. Hey? Didn't you say that the two cats have been caught? The lieutenant's words were a bit hasty. Captain Haros was a little confused because he didn't react at first, but he immediately realized the crux of the problem. The sea area of Thutmosa Kingdom. He suddenly stood up from the sofa put his hands on the desk, and asked in shock, why are they going there? And they just said it was an arrest operation. Who are they arresting? The captain actually had a vague suspicion in his mind, and an unknown feeling came to his heart. The order is to capture the slaver king of the underworld, the king to Klama, and conduct a thorough investigation of the entire kingdom of Thutmosa, arrest all armed personnel, and if there is resistance, they are allowed to be killed on the act. The captain's face looked very serious. He was pale, with a little cold sweat on his forehead. 1. Captain Haro's expression kept changing, but eventually it turned into a sigh, and he said, Has something happened? I seem to have very bad luck, don't I? Previous base commanders managed to earn enough money to promote or retire without problems. Why was everything exploding here with him? If that wasn't bad luck, what was? I didn't expect. I really didn't expect that the Navy headquarters fleet wouldn't come for the cats, Rear Admiral Dragon always targeted the Kingdom of Thutmosa from the beginning. They fooled us all, I guess it will be something similar with King Taklama. The lieutenant asked in panic, Captain, let's do it now. Should we notify King Taklama immediately to prepare? No. Captain Haros had a quick understanding of the situation. Although his physical aptitude is not high, his brain is still good, and he can think about various details quickly. The Navy headquarters is obviously well prepared this time. Rear Admiral Dragon's previous smoke bomb also shows that he is suspicious and wary of us in the Marine branches of South Blue. They may be listening to our calls right now. We can't give them a chance to intercept us. The most important thing is that our 194th branch is closest to the waters of the Kingdom of Thutmosa and will probably be regarded as a key focus. At this time, we must not mess up, let alone have any contact with that place, and King Taklama is finished. It's completely over, what's the point of informing him? But the lieutenant was a little confused and asked, completely finished? From what I know. This slaver king has had a lot of power and influence for decades in the dark world. Although the fleet of the navy headquarters is strong, they have only sent two rear admirals this time. Humph, I said he is completely finished because his identity has been completely exposed, and the navy headquarters is obviously going to ruthlessly deal with him. Compared to the world's strongest military organization, what is a slave king? Captain Haros looked at the lieutenant with disdain. The big figures in the dark world are certainly scary if they are in the dark, but once they are exposed to the sun, they will be meat on the chopping board. Even if Taklama has the ability to defeat Rear Admiral Dragon's fleet, what if the Navy headquarters sends a stronger and larger combat force in the future? What if Vice Admiral Garp arrives? 1. Finishing, Captain Haros looked meaningfully at the lieutenant, between King Taklama and the Navy, which side do you think we should be on? I don't think it will be difficult to choose. And I'm sure that even if we weren't there, some fool would call and warn the kingdom of Thutmosa. Maybe it's happening right now, and those people will be our scapegoats. The lieutenant, after hearing the explanation, calmed down and asked one last question, if we are under suspicion, we are likely to face consequences. What will we do, commander? 
there is a high possibility of being held accountable, but the crime does not lead to death. We have only been here a few years. If we really want to be held accountable, the previous base commanders must be investigated one by one. On the other hand, if we try to help King Taklama at this point, it will be like being his accomplices. As soon as he finished speaking, Captain Haro straightened his suit and coat of justice, then picked up the Den Den Mushi and gave the order seriously, transmit the order, the entire fleet must prepare immediately and arrive at the sea area of the Thutmosa Kingdom within the stipulated time. Then he quickly passed the lieutenant and walked out of the office. When the latter saw this, he quickly followed behind him. Base Commander, how many troops will we send to each ship this time? The warships of the marine branches can usually carry 300 people, and when fully loaded, it can carry 500 people. The specific number of people depends on the situation. The remaining navy is responsible for staying at the base. Fully loaded. At full capacity. Captain Haros responded without hesitation. If they were going to continue in the navy line, they needed to show their maximum commitment. It was the best way to save the situation at this time. Understood. The lieutenant agreed. Ten minutes later, the eight warships of the 194th branch, which had been well prepared, quickly sailed out of Melon Island and headed towards the Kingdom of Thutmosa, fully armed. At the same time, the Navy headquarters fleet led by Dragon was less than three hours away from the Kingdom of Thutmosa. Rear Admiral Irwin walked out of the cabin and came to the deck. Rear Admiral Dragon, you guessed it right. The people from CP2 just sent information. After receiving our order, the 242nd branch and the 289th branch immediately notified the Kingdom of Thutmosa, but strangely there was no movement from the 194th branch, which was the closest. Instead, all the warships were sent with full force. At first, after hearing the previous part, Dragon did not change at all and was still looking at the sea in the distance silently. But after hearing the latter part, he subconsciously raised his eyebrows and turned to look at the other party. I remember the base commander of the 194th branch was Captain Haros, right? That's right. It seems that Captain Haros is very smart. Dragon's mood was a little complicated at this time. He originally wanted to report it to the Navy headquarters and clean up all the corrupt Navy who were colluding with the Slaver King. But now Haros's performance is a bit difficult to manage because he is in sharp contrast with the other two base commanders. In this way, I believe that the senior officials of Marine Ford will not embarrass the other party too much when they find out. At most, most of the bribed property will be confiscated, the military rank will be demoted, and they will be transferred from their posts. Instead, the two base commanders will need to go to the NICE lobby. 1. It's time to meet Captain Haros. Immediately afterwards, Dragon looked at Rear Admiral Irwin and asked, How are the pirates doing? The injuries of those who survived are not serious. The ship's doctors have already taken care of them. However, the two CAD captains are still unconscious. Their injuries are the most serious. But the doctors say that they are unlikely to die, after all, they are Zoan type devil fruit users, their resistance is higher than that of ordinary people. After speaking, Rear Admiral Irwin asked curiously, Are you implying that we won't take them to Impel Down? Yes, I want to take them to Marineford and lock them in our prison. Dragon responded without reservation. Seeing as how these pirates haven't attacked civilians, I don't consider them extremely evil. I don't think they need to be sent to that hellhole of Impel Down. I'm considering recruiting them into the Navy. So, it's like this. Two Zoan type ability users are indeed of great value. Once trained, they will be good combat power. Irwin nodded and was not too shocked. The Navy often recruited captured pirates if they were useful and were not high level criminals according to the world government. Although, if a problem arose later, the Navy officers could be held responsible. Dash. Chapter 56, Chapter 56, The Slaver King's War Preparations. The Kingdom of Thutmosa, 
as mentioned before, is a desert country, but it is different from Arabasta because it is located in the south blue and has normal seasonal changes, and its most beautiful season is winter. In winter, the entire island will be covered with snowflakes, covering the golden sand sea with a layer of ice and snow. The mixed scene of white and gold gives people a visual beauty. The entire kingdom, although it is a medium-sized island, has only one city, called Shabak, or Sand City. The vastness of the territory, the scarcity of inhabitants and the desert environment gave the impression of weakness and poverty. Even the pirates passing by didn't bother to stop, considering it a waste of time. But what the world doesn't know is that beneath the surface capital of Shabak, there is an extremely wide underground space. Endless buildings shone with yellow lights, weaving screams, cries, moans and lamentations in the air, impregnated with despair and suffering. Soldiers with green necklaces, dressed in white tunics, carrying whips, axes, spears or rifles, patrolled everywhere. Their expressionless faces gave them a terrifying appearance. Looking into the distance, you can see the tallest and eye-catching pyramid building, which is the real palace of the kingdom of Thutmosa. Just now, King Taklama, the famous slaver king in the underworld, has received news that the navy's fleet is about to capture him. Sitting on the golden throne, he showed no reaction. The senior officials under him were also unable to interpret the expression of this monarch. Because King Taklama wears a golden mask on his face, and his clothes are in a typical pharaonic style, with white robes, wide neck ornaments and a golden scepter in his hand. In the great stone hall stood four great officials dressed in white, with two sturdy soldiers guarding on either side. Your Majesty, do we need to prepare to evacuate? One of them hesitated and asked first. King Taklama, who was sitting on the throne, asked back, how many people, treasures, and ships can be evacuated in about two hours. This. The official hesitated and asked, then shall we notify the slave catchers outside to come back for support? No. King Taklama seemed to have his own idea and rejected him immediately. The total number of slave catchers is only 10,000, and there are less than 2,000 here in the South Blue. There are even fewer who can come back in a short time. It doesn't matter whether they come or not. Even if 10,000 people can come back, what's the use? They are not combat personnel. What do you mean? The official asked doubtfully. What I mean is that we must evacuate. Now that we have been brought to the light, we must find a way to return to the darkness. The King Taklama, who was dressed in gold, stood up from his throne. His two-meter-tall strong body was clearly exposed, and his cold mask looked down at the four people below. But now the first fleet of the navy has arrived at the gate. If you want to retain most of our power, you must first defeat them and then escape into the darkness before the second strongest fleet arrives. After listening, the four officials suddenly realized and understood what His Majesty the King was thinking. Two hours is enough for us to prepare for war. At the same time, prepare the ships. After defeating the naval fleet, immediately transfer the large troops and all necessary supplies and treasures. Yes, Your Majesty. What about the slaves? Should they go with us? Another official asked, because for their kingdom of Thutmosa, slaves were the main source of income. Bring 50,000 of the best quality slaves and let the rest sleep under this desert. It can be considered a good burial place. King Taklama made the decision without mercy. Yes, Your Majesty. The officials responded in unison again, and no one said a word for the abandoned slaves, because as long as they dared to speak out, they would immediately become one of them. Have you found any information about Rear Admiral Dragon and Rear Admiral Irwin? King Taklama asked. Your Majesty, Rear Admiral Irwin, according to the information from the slave catchers on the Grand Line, is a very outstanding swordsman, but other than that, there is nothing noteworthy. Instead, Rear Admiral Dragon it needs your attention. Oh? He's a devil fruit user. No, the information the slave catchers found is that he is a person without abilities, but his identity is very special. Tell me. 
Yes, Rear Admiral Dragon, whose full name is Monkey D. Dragon. He is the son of the naval hero, the Vice Admiral Moki D. Garp. This is said to be his first time leading a major military operation as Commander-in-Chief. Hearing Garp's name, King Taklama's eyes under the golden mask became solemn. Despite the belief that ignorance brings bravery, as King of the Slaves in the Underworld, he knew more than ordinary people could ever know. Most civilians think that the reason why Garp is called a naval hero is because he has been hunting down the Roger pirates for a long time and forced them into desperate situations several times. In the end, he personally arrested and sent them to the execution stand. But the king knew very well that this was not the case, or that this was not the main reason. According to his assumption, Vice Admiral Garp's strength could be greater than that of Navy Admiral Sengoku. Have you found out where Vice Admiral Garp is now? The officer in charge of intelligence replied respectfully, the slave catchers have not found the specific location. Vice Admiral Garp is rumored to be someone who comes and goes as he pleases. However, they say that he recently returned to the East Blue, to his homeland. I see. King Taklam relaxed a little and thought about trying to save Dragon's life in the next battle. This wasn't worth making Garp his enemy over. If Garp could chase Roger to death for more than ten years, he would probably be able to avenge his son and chase him for more than ten years. He doesn't want to provoke a mad dog with the highest combat power in the world. Okay, let's go down and get ready. Yes, Your Majesty. Soon, the more than 30,000 slave guards in the underground city of Thutmosa Kingdom began to make big movements. They pulled out guns, ammunition and even artillery in large quantities, and then through underground tunnels, they headed towards the coastal areas, preparing to set up defenses and traps. The resources accumulated over decades as the Slaver King were fully activated at that moment. At the same time, groups of young men were pulled out of the cells. Under the guard of soldiers on both sides, they lined up to walk towards the Great Pyramid, not knowing what King Taklama was going to do. In short, everyone knows that this is a war, with tens of thousands of people participating on both sides. Above the sea, Dragon also met with the fleets of the 194th Marine Branch, the 242nd Marine Branch, and the 289th Marine Branch of the South Blue. The naval fleet at this time was extremely large. Five large warships of the headquarters level, each carrying a thousand headquarters naval personnel, two artillery decks, three triple anti-aircraft batteries, and a total of 33 large caliber artillery pieces. 18 branch-level small warships, all with one gun deck and a total of 12 medium-caliber guns, of which eight warships from the 194th Marine Branch are fully loaded with 500 men, and the remaining 10 ships are all with a regular 300 men. The total strength of the entire fleet was 12,000 Marines. Although it seems to be inferior to the 30,000 legions of the Kingdom of Thutmosa, in Dragon's opinion, his side is stronger than the former in terms of combat power and firepower. One rear admiral and fifty headquarters officers at all levels who were proficient in the six forms and even some who had eaten devil fruits were enough to suppress the soldiers who were responsible for guarding the slaves all day long. As for King Taklama, he will naturally deal with it. Although from the intelligence point of view, the slaver king's strength in all aspects was superior to his own, Dragon did not feel the slightest fear because of this. When he thought that defeating the opponent would save hundreds of thousands of civilians, the blood in his body began to boil. This was the just battle he had always dreamed of. Target, the Kingdom of Thutmosa. Dragon flew in the air accompanied by a green whirlwind and issued orders to the huge naval fleet composed of 23 large and small warships below. To March. Dash. Chapter 57, Chapter 57, The Whole Navy is Mobilized At two o'clock in the afternoon, it is when the sun is at its hottest. In addition, it is summer, and the kingdom of Thutmosa is a desert land, and the temperature in the entire area has basically reached its highest point. The excessive glare of the sun fell on the vast sea, you could even make out a slight mist on the water, evaporating and distorting the light on the surface. At that precise moment, 
on the distant horizon, the navy ships appeared. The blue warships with white sails fluttering, with a formation of more than twenty ships, led by four of the largest, covered almost the entire sea. They looked like sea beasts, boldly advancing with the wind in their favor. The navy is coming. On the golden island in the middle of a sea of sand, the guardians hidden in cool tunnels, hearing the warning signal, grabbed their weapons and ran towards the trenches, staring at the rapidly approaching navy ships. No one backed away, because they knew there was no way to retreat, and the green collars around their necks would not allow them to take a step back until they received the order to evacuate. But it is not without its benefits, at least it allows them to exert 100% of their power. This is going to be difficult to combat. Rear Admiral Irwin was speechless looking at the golden world filled with sand and sea. Although his Kanbuncho Kohaki allowed him to detect many presences, hardly anything could be seen with the naked eye. How could the ships on his side fire in this situation? At the same time, the huge fleet began to separate according to the original plan. Except for the headquarters warship he was on and three small warships from the 194th Marine Branch, the rest of the fleet deployed to three other directions in Thutmose's kingdom. Their purpose this time is to capture the king to Klama, thoroughly investigate all its forces, rescue all captured slaves, and of course carry out a comprehensive siege. Go get a piece of paper. Rear Admiral Irwin ordered a marine behind him. When he brought him paper and pen, he quickly recorded the enemy forces he had perceived. However, the range of his Kanbuncho Kohaki is not enough to perceive the entire island, so he only knows the general situation of the frontal coastal defense line. This is enough. Let them carry out artillery bombardment and troop deployment according to this picture. Yes. The Marine took the paper handed by Rear Admiral Irwin and ran quickly into the cabin to convey the order. The Rear Admiral looked at the relentless sun that still burned overhead, radiating infinite heat and light. The war has begun. Boom, 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 boom. Fifteen minutes later, a headquarters warship and three marine branch warships were strategically positioned, pointing their cannons towards the island's golden sand sea. The triple cannon on the bow of the main warship rotated to join the triple cannons on the sides, along with twelve large caliber cannons and eighteen medium cannons from the marine branch warships. A total of thirty-six artillery pieces, large and small, launched a fierce attack on the Slave Keeper Corps defense line along the coast. In an instant, the artillery fire roared, the gunpowder smoke filled the air, and the flames soared into the sky. The projectiles, loaded with explosives, left brilliant trails in the air, creating an impressive tapestry of fire over the sea of sand. Trenches hidden under layers of sand on the island were repeatedly ruptured by explosions, debris flying everywhere. Some unfortunate people were consumed by the fire or died instantly from the explosion. Fortunately, most of the people hid in the tunnel in time, and the casualties were not large. However, the problem was that their artillery was unable to effectively counterattack due to range issues. The range difference between naval guns and ordinary artillery is huge, so the Slave Keeper Corps can only grit its teeth and endure the constant bombardment of the Navy. But for the Navy, the bombing was not so much about its effectiveness, but about the coverage of fire. Its purpose is to cover the landing of troops on the island. Small boats carrying marines armed with rifles and knives, taking advantage of the fire suppression of their own fleet, were heading at full speed towards the coast. But as they approached the beach, they faced return fire and a hail of bullets from the Slave Keeper Corps on shore. These marines, either from headquarters or branch, they had to face it head on. To be honest, this will cause huge casualties, but this is an inevitable process, and it is also the promotion path for all marines. Back then, Sengoku, Garp, Zephyr and even Vice Admiral Tsuru, fought like them with guns and knives, with cannonballs in their heads and bullets around them. As long as they can survive on the battlefield, their military ranks will be promoted, they will gain military exploits, and they will have the opportunity to gain access to more advanced swordsmanship, physical skills and even exchange for devil fruits. Hence, this war is an opportunity for many people. 
At the same time, the slave keeper corps had to leave the tunnels and return to the trenches because they needed to block the marine landing. This requires facing artillery bombardment from four warships at sea. With Rear Admiral Irwin's humanoid radar, the fire coverage can be said to be quite accurate. For a time, the casualty rate of both the Navy and the slave guards began to increase rapidly. Nonetheless, looking down from a high altitude, one can clearly see that as more and more naval forces step onto the beach, the distance between the two sides is shrinking at a speed visible to the naked eye. Most of these are Marines from the Navy headquarters. Their high-intensity training and rich combat experience are fully demonstrated as soon as they step ashore. It can be said that all the Marines at the Navy headquarters have superhuman physiques. In comparison, the Marines from the 194th Marine branch were very different. They were basically the ones who were shot to death. The northern, southern, eastern and western coasts of Thutmose's kingdom had become a brutal battlefield. What's strange is that the figure of Rear Admiral Dragon has not been seen so far, not even the flagship belonging to him. In fact, King Taklama, who was sitting on the Golden Throne in the Pyramid, was also puzzled by this. Looking at the real-time images projected by several Den Den Mushi in the hall, Dragon was not seen on the battlefield. Occasionally, he would appear as a naval officer, but no higher than the rank of lieutenant. To guard against these masters from the Navy headquarters, he has also prepared a group of elites to be sent to various defense lines, but now not a single master is seen. Your Majesty! Your Majesty! At this moment, a senior official ran in as hard as he could, and then fell down on the cold stone slab with a thud. Even so, he didn't care and shouted breathlessly. Something terrible, Your Majesty! The Shabak capital is being bombed by the navy. Nonsense! King Taklama stood up angrily, staring coldly at the officer. We are inside the Sand Island. No matter how far the warship's range is, it can't reach here. But those warships came from the sky, and they were bombarding us from the sky. What? King Taklama suddenly raised his head. Although there was only a smooth ceiling to his eyes, his Kanbuncho Kohaki was rapidly rising upward, feeling silently. At the same time, as the officer said, a Navy headquarters warship was floating in the sky surrounded by a green whirlpool, pointing its side cannons at Shabak and firing at full power. Dragon stood atop the mast, the coat of justice behind him flapping in the strong wind. 2. The whole Navy is mobilized. With his command, hundreds of naval officers, already prepared on deck, rose like fierce white eagles, charging towards Shabak from all angles. Kill. Dash. Chapter 58, Chapter 58, The Cruelty and Strength of the Slaver King Fifty senior officers of the Navy headquarters, dressed in cloaks of justice and using the moonwalk, scattered at a surprising speed, becoming white blurs in the air. For a time, the entire city of Shabak was filled with gunshots, fighting, and was completely plunged into chaos. A lieutenant encountered a group of five slave keepers. Instead of landing, he hovered in the air, dodging the bursts of gunfire, moving from side to side, and then appeared behind the five of them in the blink of an eye. Swish! Spurt! The next moment, a line of blood slowly appeared on the necks of several people, but the lieutenant did not even look at their fallen postures, and once again attacked the next group of targets at high speed. On the other hand, an unarmed captain first smashed a battle axe coming towards him head on with a punch, then hit the opponent in the face, sending him rolling his eyes into the air, knocking down three slave guards in his path. Iron body. Suddenly, the colonel tensed completely, resisting the attacks of two long knives and several bullets grabbing the head of one of them without suffering any damage, using it as a weapon to hit another man, and finally throwing him like garbage towards the guards who fired, leaving them bloodied before disappearing behind an earthen wall. Even though the slave guardians of the kingdom of Thutmosa were numerous, they were unable to stop the large-scale slaughter of these white falcons. Shave, moonwalk, finger pistol, tempest kick, paper art, iron body, 
these body techniques that surpassed human limits caused a surprising impact every time they were used. Some people even have superb swordsmanship or possess some kind of strange devil fruit ability. Although some naval officers noted that the strength displayed by these slaves wearing green collars was somewhat different from that of ordinary people, some even seemed to be comparable to the lieutenants of the Navy headquarters. But they didn't really make much difference in battle. Let alone these guardians, who only had a slightly better build than normal people, could not compare in other aspects with the marines of the headquarters. Groups of slave warriors ran out of the tunnels, but soon they were easily wiped out by a flash of white shadow, turning into corpses lying in a pool of blood. Four or five naval officers have even started to join forces to fight back towards the underground passage. One of the burly lieutenants was seen rushing forward at an extremely fast speed, and a group of slave guards who had just appeared had their necks and chests cut open under the streaks of green light. Oh, so this is Lieutenant Jack's devil fruit ability, model, mantis, his speed is really impressive, and his arms are quite sharp. Another lieutenant smiled boldly. Let's go quickly. If we can find King Taklama first, it will be a great achievement. Another lieutenant, who wrapped his fists in white bandages, urged and then continued to fight deeper. Hearing this, the other people stopped joking and started to move quickly. However, within a few seconds, there was a heavy impact in front of them, and then the bandage lieutenant flew back, although he seemed not to be too affected and quickly regained his balance. What's the situation? What's wrong? Just when Lieutenant Jack and others were asking, a large number of figures shot out from the darkness, without giving the lieutenant with bandages on his hands time to respond. Seeing this, the former did not waste time arguing, but quickly became entangled in fighting in the narrow space of the tunnel, but as they fought, the Navy experts were pushed back. Although there are many people on the other side, Compared to the previous slave keepers, the strength of this group of black shadows is indeed extraordinary. In desperation, Lieutenant Jack and others had no choice but to exit the tunnel, quickly distance themselves, and meet up with more colleagues around them. At the same time, taking advantage of the bright sunlight, they could finally see the other group's appearance clearly. What are these guys? They saw hundreds of figures pouring out of the underground passage and each of them was wearing a black breastplate, a white robe and skirt, and held two long-handled iron axes in their hands. Of course, the green collars around their necks were a standard feature. The most shocking thing is their physical condition. The muscles all over their bodies are so swollen that they give people a sense that they are about to explode. Moreover, the surface of their skin is covered with light black markings. Their eyeballs are almost completely white and their pupils are basically invisible, only having a faint circular outline. As soon as these strange guys appeared, they formed groups in twos and threes and pounced on various marines. Although they did not know the skills of Shave and Moonwalk, their extremely tyrannical strength could crush rock formations with just one step on the ground. They jumped up with bursts of sound piercing the air. Clang! There was an extremely crisp sound of metal clashing, and a lieutenant's long knife collided with the incoming iron axe. Suddenly, terrible power erupted, and cracks appeared in the ground under the feet of the two men. What a powerful force! This lieutenant from the headquarters only stood in a stalemate for a few seconds before he had to step back to release his strength. Feeling the slightly numb palms, he felt incredible in his heart. Although his ability does not lie in strength, the people of South Blue should not be able to suppress him, plus the opponent is not even a Zoan-type ability user. At the same time, other Navy officers were also feeling the pressure. Although it was not an extremely difficult task to fight against them, it was certainly not as easy as before. However, some who relied on strength and were used to facing challenges directly, were now suffering injuries of varying degrees due to their superior strength and greater numbers. High in the sky, Dragon, standing on the mast of the warship, saw this scene with solemn eyes. Ha 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 ha! In the underground pyramid palace, King Taklama, wearing a golden mask, laughed heartily while looking at the video, and his laughter continued to ripple in the empty hall. 
the strongest elite warriors, with 100% physical power, plus the effect of luxury water. It really has a remarkable effect. Too bad they are single-use weapons and luxury water is so limited in quantity. If one looked carefully, the hundreds of warriors who originally guarded the hall had disappeared, used as sacrifices against the 50 headquarters officers led by Dragon. Of course, normal guards cannot be a match for the elite navy, but this slaver king of the underworld took out the luxury water from the warehouse and let them drink it. Although the medicinal effect of luxury water can only last for five minutes, and the person who takes it will die suddenly after five minutes, the power can be exerted several times in these five minutes. The current King Taklam regrets most that he did not prepare enough luxury water in advance. It is really because Dragon's previous smoke bomb was too successful, and he never thought that he would be discovered. This son of Garp is actually a person with abilities, and he also came up with the strategy of gathering all the elites to attack from the sky. It's really interesting. As he spoke, King Taklama slowly stood up, leaning on his golden scepter. On the floor, an official dressed in white lay in a state of extreme terror. He appeared to have strangled himself with his own hands, which were still around his neck. This person had been the one who previously claimed that Dragon was not an ability user. Logically speaking, this information was sent by the slave catcher on the Grand Line. He was only responsible for relaying it, but the slave king was not interested in distinguishing truth from lies. However, let me teach you how powerless the so-called tactics and strategies are in the face of absolute strength in this world where power is paramount. Suddenly, the back of his hand holding the scepter began to glow with green light. In the next instant, a gust of wind and sand erupted from all sides, sweeping the entire hall. When all the wind and sand disappeared again, the king in front of the golden throne was also gone. Dash. Chapter 59 Chapter 59 The Mystery of the Slaver King's Ability Slash Spurt A flash of sword light flashed diagonally, and blood spurted out from the three white-robed warriors with green collars in front of Captain Haros. A long bloody gash was opened from their shoulders to their abdomens. The sudden pain made them fall to the ground, screaming desperately as the blood stained the ground red, they were barely conscious. The base commander of the 194th Marine Branch stationed on Melon Island glanced at the surrounding battle situation with a heavy expression. At some point, the bombardment between the two sides had ended. As a large number of naval forces rushed to the trenches of the Slave Keeper's Corps under the hail of artillery fire and bullets, the form of the battle changed from hot weapons to a brutal fight with cold weapons. The collision of swords and axes, sparks flying, ferocious faces, bloody sand on the ground, crazy howls, corpses everywhere, the entire coastal desert has been completely shrouded in the tragic atmosphere of this primitive fight. Initially, the navy had the advantage. But the troops on the slave-keeping side seemed to be endless and young and strong warriors armed with swords and axes would emerge from the tunnel at every moment. They were as strong as the marines at headquarters and faced pain, death and battle with uncontrolled ferocity, like wild beasts, ready for anything until their last breath while their limbs still moved. Faced with this kind of opponent, even the well-trained navy gradually became overwhelmed. Out of necessity, the few remaining senior officers on the warships also joined the fight. Not only Captain Haros, even Rear Admiral Irwin in the distance was decimating everyone around her with ruthless efficiency. Precisely because of their participation, the Navy finally stabilized the situation, but the follow-up troops of the Slave Keeper Corps continued to flow. This has exceeded the total troop strength of about 30,000 described in the intelligence. The Kingdom of Thutmosa is at war on several fronts, and with part of its forces defending the capital, it is estimated that there should be around 6,000 soldiers on each front. In comparison, the Navy had around 3,000, which in theory wasn't much of a difference. But looking now, the desert was filled with enemy soldiers, it looked like almost 10,000 at a glance. Damn it, those bastards CP2, there is definitely something wrong with this information. Captain Heros cursed as he fought, encountering no opposition wherever he went. 
although he doesn't know the Rokushiki, his swordsmanship can be considered superb. Coupled with the speed, reaction, and strength he has developed over the years, he is worthy of the cape of justice he wears. In addition, although Dragon took away all the officer from the Navy headquarters except Rear Admiral Irwin, but he did not take the lower ranking officers. If any of them were placed in a Marine branch, any of them could act as base commander. Some even surpassed Captain Harrow's in skill. Although the Slave Keeper Corps has a large number of people, it was practically impossible for them to defeat so many skilled Marines in a short time, especially with the presence of an officer like Rear Admiral Irwin. These guys are not soldiers. 1. At that moment, a Marine from the Marine branch of South Blue believed he had discovered a shocking secret. He had noticed that the soldiers of the slave army had left behind their ordered uniforms to wear smelly rags and carry makeshift weapons. The only thing similar was their strength and determination. Shut up! At this time, a lieutenant from the 194th Marine branch came over and yelled. In fact, some people have noticed this a long time ago. Coupled with the clues about the slaver king of the underworld, it is not difficult to guess that most of these people are the slaves that we have come to save. But what did that matter? On such a bloody and brutal battlefield, where life and death were decided at every moment, even if it is not clear why these slaves are fighting crazily for Thutmose Palace, as long as they swing their axes towards their own side, they are the enemy and can only be killed first. Let's explore the reasons later. Meanwhile, inside Shabak, the city where the outcome of the war would truly be decided, the huge warships in the sky had stopped firing. The fifty navy officers who had been left behind had wiped out the normal defenders of the slavers, and there was no need to cause further damage to the structures, and besides, the artillery fire could harm their comrades. On the battlefield formed by the entire city, fifty navy elites in white capes of justice, using the Rokushiki, swordsmanship, and devil fruit abilities, fought against the guards who were covered in black markings and looked like savage beasts. They fought fast, each transforming into incredibly fast white shadows and black shadows, fighting fiercely on rooftops, in alleyways, and even in the air. Due to the disparity in numbers, basically every Navy officer had to deal with two guards at the same time. Luxury Water's five-minute time limit may seem short, but for this group of supermen, every minute is enough to fight dozens of rounds. They have strong physical strength, powerful strength, and superior speed. Even if an ordinary person is given a safe place to watch the battle, his naked eyes can only see fleeting after images. If the distance is closer, the eardrums will be damaged and ruptured by the continuous sonic booms. Boom. Boom. Earthen buildings collapsed under the attacks. The impacts left craters in the ground, accompanied by thunder-like booms and whistles after each hit. Between the war cries, the clash of weapons and the moans of pain, it made people feel both fear and excitement. This place is hell for the cowardly, but it is heaven for the bellicose. Suddenly, a green whirlwind appeared in the sky. It turned out that Dragon couldn't hold back and finally took action. He didn't know what was going on with these black striped guards, nor did he know that the effect of the luxury water was only five minutes. What he saw was that the elites he brought were constantly being injured. Although no one has been seriously injured or killed so far, he doesn't want to wait until there are casualties. In fact, Dragon has been waiting for the Slaver King, to Klamma, to show up, but after waiting and waiting, he didn't show up, so he wanted to deal with this group of weird violent warriors first. It became a whirlwind that devastated everything in its path, like a large spinning drill bit, leaving a trail of chaos and destruction. Regardless of the ferocity and power of the guards who drank the luxury water, once touched by the whirlwind, their fate was instant death. Whether it was one, two, or even a group, the green whirlwind did not discriminate. Anyone who confronted or was chased by him ended up destroyed. No one could resist it. At this moment, Dragon vividly demonstrated the power of the top Logia-type storm devil fruit in front of all the naval commanders. But what they don't know is that this is just a small test, after all, Dragon's devil fruit power has not yet awakened. 
The most terrifying thing about the Logia type is that after it awakens, it can cause large-scale destructive power like a natural disaster. For him, who has just eaten the devil fruit for a year, this seems a bit far away. Roar! Crash! At the moment when the tornado that Dragon had transformed into was ravaging Shabak, when the Navy officers began to smile with excitement, a mass of yellow sand shot out from the entrance of the underground space. Boom! In the next instant, the green tornado and the yellow sand mass collided violently. A fierce storm raged, throwing the black striped guards and Navy officers out of the central city area, coalescing into a sand tornado, rising rapidly, and passing over the large warship in the sky. I didn't expect that you are actually a Logia type. Do you want to be my slave? High in the sky, in a world filled with yellow sand and green wind, a voice mixed with excitement and joking sounded in Dragon's ears. But his attention was focused on one question. What's the matter with this slaver king's ability? Is he also a Logia type? But doesn't the intelligence say that he is a Paramecia type? Dash. Chapter 60, Chapter 60, Become the Master of the Entire World Although King Taklama was wearing a golden mask on his face, one could still feel the fierce look he was giving Dragon. Before, he had thought about sparing Dragon out of fear of Garp. But now, his thoughts changed. This is a Logia-type ability user. Is there a better slave than this? He wants to turn Dragon into his slave and pet. For this reason, he is happy to have a deadly feud with Garp. The Logia-type skill is too valuable. Furthermore, after this battle, he planned to hide in the shadows again, and escape to the underworld. Wasn't it enough to not be found by Garp? These ideas flashed through his mind. The king of Taklamakan struck heavily with his golden scepter, causing a terrifying sonic boom. An invisible aura of Busos Hoku Haki covered the scepter that was heading towards Dragon's back. Ryu no Kajizum. Dragon's reaction, sensing the danger, was quick. His right hand transformed into a deep black-coated claw and blocked the fierce attack. Clang! When the claw and the scepter met, the surrounding wind and sand were dispersed by a shock wave, revealing the figures of Dragon and King Taklama before everyone. Before anyone could react, they saw Drago in being thrown by the king towards the warship's armor, but thanks to his passive skill of elementalization, he suffered no further damage, dispersing into a whirlwind of wind and reforming into his human form. What a powerful Busos Hoku Haki! Dragon stared coldly at King Taklama standing in the air in the distance with his feet on a ball of cocky sand. The blow just now was enough to make him aware of the gap between the two sides. Although the latter's level of Busos Hoku Haki is not enough to crush him, it is still better than him. But he had already been mentally prepared for this. No matter what, the other party was also the slaver king of the underworld. It would be strange if he didn't even have this strength. But so, what? Swirl. Dragon's body shook, and he was surrounded by whirlwinds. Transformed into a green gust, he darted bravely forward. In this regard, King Taklama naturally had no reason to give in. His golden scepter also darkened and moved masterfully, creating black waves, accompanied by more sand emerging beneath his feet. The green vortex collided with the yellow sand again, and the shadows of the claws and scepter were constantly colliding. Clang! 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 The metallic sound echoed in the sky above Shabak. The sonic booms erupted during each confrontation rippled across the entire venue, and the circles of air waves visible to the naked eye were like air turning into water waves. During the fierce battle, although there was no time to speak at all, King Taklama admired Dragon's physical skills very much. He thought secretly. He really deserves to be Garp's son. At this moment, the better Dragon performed, the happier the Slaver King was. Before. He had thought that Dragon was just a rear admiral and had no other strengths except for his Logia-type abilities. However, after this confrontation, he assessed that Dragon was above many Navy vice-admirals he had encountered before. But, it still wasn't enough. To beat me, 
your current power is too far away. King Taklama laughed wildly in his heart. The next moment, a bright green light glowed in his free left hand. Compared to the color of the whirlwind surrounding dragon, this light was more dazzling and stranger, anyone who sees that light will feel uneasiness in their heart. Um. Dragon, while fighting with all his might against the golden scepter, sensed the imminent threat with his Kanbunsho Kohaki. Without hesitation, he elementalized himself by quickly dispersing backwards in the form of wind. In the midst of this transformation into wind, Dragon saw the source of the threat. It was a green collar that quickly passed where he was a second ago. Indeed, your ability comes from the paramecia type pet pet fruit. The information was accurate Dragon said, maintaining an unflappable facade although with a hint of fear within. If that ring caught him just now, he would be in serious trouble. In fact, Busos Hoku Haki can counter devil fruit abilities, but only if the level of Haki exceeded the development of the ability. Otherwise, the devil fruit user could break through the Haki defense and deal damage to the enemy. With the strength of the Slaver King in front of him, Dragon really didn't dare to take a gamble, so he must be careful about the sneak attack of the green collar and avoid it if he can. Ha 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 ha! Upon hearing Dragon's words, King Taklama opened his left palm that glowed with green light and let out a perverted and arrogant laugh. Yes, this ability is great, it can make everyone become my slave. Soon, you will also become my slave, the best slave. Regarding the Slaver King's words, Dragon did not have any anger, but continued to ask indifferently, then what's going on with your ability to control wind and sand? As he spoke, his Kanbunsho Kohaki scanned his surroundings, because he suspected that the other party had used the pet pet fruit's ability to control a person with the ability to control wind and sand. Well, it's not convenient to tell you this. After all, as a king, mystery is also a necessary temperament king to Klamath sneered. He is not a rookie who has just gone to see. How can he easily reveal the details of his abilities? In response to this, Dragon just snorted coldly. He was just giving it a try. After all, there are too many people in this world who only use their muscles and not their brains. Why did that idea bring up the image of his stupid father picking his nose? The exchange ends here, boy. King Taklama impatiently waved his left hand, radiating green light. Behind him, rings of green light began to form one after another, filling the space around him. At first glance, they seemed like thousands, and they continued to be generated. Become my slave obediently, I will treat you well, ha 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 ha. In the next instant, all the rings turned into a shower of green stars, shooting towards dragon, encompassing the entire space. Ryu no Tate Kaze Dragon immediately showed his storm ability and a wind dragon appeared around him. Then the wind dragon dispersed and turned into a green wind wall that blocked all the rings. As spectacular as the overwhelming green wind wall looked, it was easily pierced by the rings. Although it cannot be said that it is like air and has no hindering effect, it is indeed unable to stop the impact of the dense rings. At most, it can only slow down part of the speed due to the force of the wind. Seeing this, Dragon's expression became gloomy. On the other hand, King Taklama laughed without being surprised. The competition between Devil Fruit abilities is based on the degree of training and development of it. Although the Logia type is called the strongest of the three types of Devil Fruits, this alone cannot bridge the gap between us. So, what, justice will eventually defeat evil? This time, the loser must be you. Dragon said with determination in his eyes, showing no fear. He faced dense attacks from rings one after another. Surrounded by a green whirlwind, he was dragging after images, concentrating all his attention to dodge. Justice. It's ridiculous. There are only masters and slaves in this world. The weak are slaves, the strong are masters, and the strongest is the master of everyone. And I, Taklama. King Taklama raised his golden scepter, looking at the burning sun in the sky and expressed his greatest ambition. I will be known as the Slave King, and I will become the owner of the entire world.